the highly anticipated expansion of the hit franchise. Plus, did you hear that Stranger Things tallied 13 Emmy nominations this year, including Outstanding Drama Series? Just ahead, our conversation with Brett Gelman, who plays the hilarious Murray on the show. And nobody puts baby in the corner. Dirty Dancing just turned 35 years old, if you can believe it. We're going to bring you an interview from our vault with the late, great Patrick Swayze. But first, here's Carson with today's pop star. First up on Popstar, lots to get to today. House of the Dragon, remember how we told you yesterday, it seemed like literally everybody was watching this show, the premiere on Sunday night. Well, it turns out that was the case. The premiere of Game of Thrones, the prequel series here, racked up nearly 10 million views, the biggest audience for any new original series in HBO's history. And despite a few technical hiccups with network streaming app, the debut episode made House of the Dragon the longest trending topic on Twitter. It was ranked number one for 14 straight hours. Let's take a look at what folks online were saying about the premiere one person tweeted me 35 seconds into house of the dragon uh, along with this one this is the meme of michael scott <laughs> no question about it i am ready to get hurt again <laughs> another fan writing i'm someone who was severely disappointed with the final season of game of thrones and this was exceptional if the rest of the season keeps this level of quality wow and if you missed that first episode you have until the sunday to catch up new episodes are going to air weekly until the season finale on october 23rd okay. Did you guys see it? Anybody see it yet? Yeah, I'm going no, to. I'm dying to see it. It's my cue. Yeah. Uh, next up, Harry Styles, the pop superstars, landed on the first ever global cover of Rolling Stone magazine. And inside the issue, Harry opening up about his acting career, what it's like having his love life in the spotlight, and about finding a new audience with his number one single, As It Was. Harry telling the magazine how a surprising number of men stop him on the street to talk about that track. Of course, we all remember our packed plaza. Yeah. Our fans were rocking out to that one when we were kicking off our, our concert series back in May and even though his new music has only been out for a few months Harry is also revealing that he's already working on his next album sharing how he and his collaborators are already workshopping new ideas saying I think all of us are so excited to get back to it which feels insane because we just put out no, that's when you know you're on a roll yeah exactly you just can't stop writing hits we don't know where he finds the time to do all of his writing Harry's currently in the middle of a 15 show residency right down the street here at Madison Square Garden where he's going to be until late September before moving on to a series of concerts wow. in Chicago and LA. Maybe he should swing by the Kellyoki bus. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Take a shot at it. Uh, next up, Mick Jagger. There probably aren't many times when you can look at a rock and roll icon and say to yourself, well, this is actually relatable. But perhaps jamming out at a Coldplay concert is our great unifier. Take a look. Wembley. That's yeah. insane. That was yesterday. Crazy. Mick Jagger tweeted that video uh, yesterday saying, well, way up in the stands there, that's at Wembley Stadium, obviously, Coldplay's concert, and even the Rolling Stones legend. Kind of cool to see him having a moment when Fix You comes on like the rest yeah. of us do. Wow. What a compliment, yeah. too. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And finally, the home edit. Just last week, Clea Schur of the famous organizing duo stopped by today to share an update on her battle with breast cancer and also to give us a sneak peek at a very special edition of the Home Edit magazine. It features our very own Savannah Guthrie's kitchen oh. makeover. And now this morning, we have a first look at that fall issue cover. And there it is inside. You can check out how the team was able to make Savannah's kitchen more cooking friendly and find fresh tips and tricks to help organize your home through some cool real life projects. The magazine is available for pre-order starting today. And of course, there's more to know because this is Pop Start Plus, after all. First up, Saturday Night Live. This week, a group of SNL alums sat down with Entertainment Weekly to look back on their time at the iconic show. Kate McKinnon, Maya Rudolph, Seth Meyers, Amy Poehler, and Martin Short all joined the chat. The only murders in the building star took a moment to address some retirement rumors that have been swirling around the internet about his co-star and fellow SNL alum, Steve Martin. Do you really think Steve Martin is going to retire after this? No, he's not retiring. In fact, he was uh, he was just being facetious. Mm -hmm. They said, are you thinking of retiring? He said, well, I have my 12th book. I'm on a TV series and I tour around with Marty Short. So if this is retirement, I guess I'm retired. That's what he meant. He's not retiring. Ah. Phew. All right. So there is hope for a father of the bride part three. 
Finally, Leah Michelle, the Glee actress, is the greatest star in a first look at her performance as Fanny Bryce for Funny Girl on Broadway. Over the weekend, the production released a new video featuring Leah singing one of the musical's iconic numbers. Who is of ginger and jazz? Who is as glamorous as? Who's an American beauty rose? Who is an American beauty nose? And an American beauty toes? Hey, Mr. Ziegfeld, here I am. Leah's only got a few weeks of rehearsal left. She's set to take the stage on September 6th. And that is the latest for you today. Coming up, The Lord of the Rings, the new show invades Studio 1A. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. You open the door for so many people. I love working with people. I did not do any of this by myself. Hello! Lizzo, you put a smile on yes. every single face. It feel like Christmas and my birthday or something. <laughs> Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. You open the door for so many people. I love working with people. I did not do any of this by myself. Hello! Lizzo, you put a smile on yes. every single face. It feel like Christmas and my birthday or something. <laughs> Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. Welcome back to Pop Start Plus. The Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power, transports viewers thousands of years before the events in the beloved books. And the cast of the new series stop by 1A to tell us what fans can expect. We are back with more stars from the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power. It's a new series that's about to shake up the TV landscape. To say it's big would be a gross understatement, boasting massive sets, 22 regular cast members, and two of them are here with us this morning. Ismail Cruz Cordova, Benjamin Walker. They are uh, bringing the world of the elves to life, showing us peacetime in Middle Earth. Uh, but the king, the king knows that peace can be fragile. If the elves abandon Middle-earth now, the armies of darkness will march over the face of the earth. It will be the end, not just of our people, but all peoples. If the hope of preventing that is not reason enough to make you reconsider your oath, I suggest you find another. I suggest pretty good. <laughs> it's my own Benjamin. Good morning to both. As I said during the commercial break coming in, I, I started watching the series last night, and I know why my Prime membership went up. <laughs> I, they, worth every bit. they spared no expense. I mean, this, it is a big, massive production, uh, and and the two of you are, are phenomenal in it. The elf ears. Let's talk about the ears. I mean, were you fans of the ears going in? Oh, I loved it. I did too, man. Yeah. I love it. I have these tiny ears as well, yeah. and I always got teased my family for it. So I felt that I have finally had real ears, yeah. Nor yeah. normal ears, yeah, normal ears. <laughs> and, and the language, the elf, the elvish language that you have to learn. Yeah, sure. G give me, give me a sample of. of sure. All right. Penelia es candela canta. It's very offensive. And wait, I was say, can, you, can you even tell me what it's you said a, on morning television? No, it's a curse. But it's a, an elvish curse, so it's beautiful why you yeah. do it. Your, your character is, is, not to give away too much, um, extremely regal, shall we say. Oh, thanks. How, do, how does one get into character for, for that role? Well, I mean, we have an incredible support system. That, I mean, they've they built me like an armored corset. As soon as you tighten that thing up, you, you, you're standing up straight. So it helped to, it helped to be in <laughs> yeah, the costume. Yeah, exactly, yeah. At the read-through, when you're in sweatpants, you're like, I don't feel like a king at all. 
and, and here's my, I know you, you grew up in Puerto Rico. Yeah. Um, and I read that when you watched the, the original series, when you watched it growing up, it was kind of hard for you to relate to some of it. Yeah, I mean, I, I always say I felt represented uh, spiritually, emotionally, because I'm a kid from the mountains, I, and, and the elves are from the mountains, and the elves are uh, love nature, but there wasn't an image reflected back, and that was something that was hard for me, but it, uh, it was a galvanizing aspect that essentially set the course for me to become what I am today. Uh, full, full disclosure, I was not, um, I didn't see the, the actual, so good. the movies, yeah. but I'd read the books. I think people can watch this series without having seen the, the movies and books and still uh, fully appreciate the story. 100%. I mean, because our show's thousands of years before the movies, it's like the first chapter. It's the perfect place to start. Yeah. What do you think it is about, about series like this? We were just talking about Game of Thrones a few minutes ago. The, the series like this... Are, are beyond compelling for a lot of folks, almost obsessive. Why do you think that is? I think the, the, the subject matter, the text, uh, the story allows people to see themselves in there. You find something about yourself, uh, all these aspects of humanity that transpose to fantasy. People are able to like exercise all of their hopes, their fears, their potential. My buddy Carson Daly is a, is a huge fan of the series, and he wanted to join us. He had a... Hey, what's up, fellas? Oh, oh cool. All right, nice to see you. Oh, thanks for having us. How you doing? Nice to see you. Yeah, yeah, come on. <laughs> 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 ah, I see. No, sure, sure. sure. It's, it's, about, like, about the right. elf ears oh, in the sure. show, because <laughs> how long does it take to put them on? These are my real ears. Yeah, It takes like an hour to cover them up at the show. Yeah, yeah, You've got the earring on. Yeah. It's It's beautiful. That was a that looks a very natural, man. Very it just natural. accentuates your jawline. <laughs> <laughs> uh, guys, thank you. Thank uh, you, Benjamin, man. Israel, oh, thank you. Uh, what do you mean I have more questions about the ears? Oh, wait, you know what? <laughs> we got to get to the affiliates. I'm, I'm so sorry. Do you, have the, you wear the same ones every day? or No, no, no. They're, uh, they're disposable. Yeah. The Lord of the Rings. We should mention The Lord of the Rings. Rings of Power will be available on Prime Video on September 2nd. Up next, we're heading into the Upside Down with one of the stars of Stranger Things. Stay with us. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. We are going to start with some good news. Doesn't it weekend. just feel good to be back to it school? Does. Yes. This is so healthy. Here's what's happening in your The crowd is ready. SG, you ready? Refresh and reorganize for fall. Start today. Hallie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. You open the door for so many people. I love working with people. I did not do any of this by myself. Hello! Lizzo, you put a smile on yes. every single face. It feel like Christmas or my birthday or something. <laughs> These are our missing daughters and sons. We need anyone who saw something to come forward. She was wearing a black jacket, a black top. I'm going to bring my son home alive. Dateline, Missing in America. Listen to the full season now. News is happening now. To look at what's making headlines around the world. We're coming on the air with breaking news. This is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Thanks for sticking with us here on Pop Star Plus. Stranger Things did quite well when it comes to this year's Emmy nominations. Outstanding drama series, just one of the 13 nominations it picked up. We recently spoke with a member of the cast about what it was like working on the latest season. Brett Gelman, who returned as fan favorite, Murray. I think Murray has very much evolved this season. He found his people more. He's a less 
slightly less isolated, slightly less uh, jaded person than he was in season three because he sort of learned what it meant to have friends. So you see that development a little bit, but he's still, you know, he's still a bit of a, a grouch and a, a grump. Yeah, a misanthrope, as they say. We love a good critic who calls things out how they are, you know, calls it like it is. So, and I, I think that that's very much a lot of what Murray's role is in this show. It's time. It is the darkest season. And I mean, it, the approach to Murray, I mean, you know, as I, as I play him, you know, I get to know him more and more. So it goes deeper and deeper. But I mean, things are always bad. My favorite part about playing Murray is that I get to be sort of the like urban character <laughs> amongst all these rural characters. And then he sort of brings like uh, a city vibe to it. Yet the Moja the Lisi. A vot no ruchniki ni tibye svolit sevietske ye. Hi, Jim. That I get to be one of the, you know, a character of like somewhat comedic relief in this action, thriller, horror series, which is a kind of character that I grew up wanting to play, you know. And just, uh, I mean, getting to be in these like amazing action sequences and the intensity of it, you know, while still getting to really like delve into who he really is and, and the humor of it is just uh, the best, you know? I mean, getting to be in the Duffer Brothers world that they created as this character. What? Do me a favor and move your lover's quarrel elsewhere, okay? Oh, no, 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 this, no, no, no. not a lover's yeah, quarrel, no. pal. Spare me! What is your problem? Please, stop talking! No! I can't tell you much about what Murray and Joyce are up to in it, um, but uh, working with Nit Winona is like, you know, it's a childhood dream. Uh, she's one of the greatest actresses and movie stars of all time. And uh, it, I, it's, it's amazing to me that I can call Winona Ryder a friend of mine. You know, that's just, uh, it's one of those just bizarre things of like pinching myself that this is my life. And she, we have a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun when we work together. She is like one of the kindest people and so funny. And so getting to be you know, working with her uh, on this, like almost every day that I, I worked on the show was, uh, was just like an amazing treat. Scoop's troop, this is, hmm, Bald Eagle. I've reached another junction. This is what? The fourth junction. All right, so if memory serves, this is right after the My Little Pony thesis. We went left, so he has to go right. right. Fly right, Bald Eagle. Fly right. Roger that, fly right. No sh Seeing the teen's growth uh, has been amazing. I mean, they're really like just a great bunch of people really just so incredibly talented and nice and professional and fun to be around. So to see that uh, they haven't become like disaster people, <laughs> it's nice to see that that has not happened and that they've all stayed grounded. It's amazing. I'm really grateful that the Duffer brothers uh, wrote, <laughs> wrote me more stuff in the show and that they, that they made Murray's characters you know, Murray's involvement in the show grow. And it's just, it's been, it's insane. It's, it, you forget it because when you're working on the show, it just feels like family, you know, that we're just all, you know, cast and crew. It's like, we're here to do a job and get it done and have a good time together. When you step away and you are reminded just how massive the show is. I am the most excited for people to see me, uh, you know, just do amazing acting in this season. It's just, it's really remarkable, and I think that uh, people will really, really 
enjoy my performance in a way that they haven't ever before. Uh, so that's very exciting to me. I'm no, I'm I'm really excited to. I, I just really this season. I think it's the best season, and, and I think the other three seasons have been amazing. But I think the it, it, this is everything like the up to the millionth degree. It is scarier, more action packed, and funnier than than previous seasons. And there is such an amazing balance of all of that. That uh, I mean, it's just like it's really. It's really awesome. Such a good one there. Next, we are revisiting an absolute classic in honor of its 35th anniversary, Dirty Dancing. News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. You open the door for so many people. I love working with people. I did not do any of this by myself. Hello. Lizzo, you put a smile on yes. every single face. It felt like Christmas and my birthday or something. <laughs> For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Welcome back to Pop Star Plus. It is hard to believe, but this week marks 35 years since the release of Dirty Dancing. The film stars Patrick Swayze as Johnny and Jennifer Grey as Baby. And we get to watch what happens when you combine romance and dancing at a vacation resort. Check out this throwback interview from our vault with the late, great Patrick Swayze opening up about the beloved film's message. The last time we had a chance here to speak with actor Patrick Swayze, he was hoping to combine his skills as an actor, dancer, and singer, and a little over a year later, now he has in the film Dirty Dancing. Welcome back. Good scene. Good to be here. Is the role as ideal as I've portrayed it to be? Ideal as you, well, I get to dance. Sort of. You get to sing. You did a little music in this too, yeah, right? Yeah, I, I wrote one of the songs for it. Yeah. Yeah, I've been. Now that I've given up being Mr. Rockstar, I'm uh, moving through the back door and writing music for the stuff I do. How long ago was that a was that an ambition to be a rock star? Oh, I mean, we're talking more than ten years. Ten yeah. minutes ago. What? Uh, <laughs> no, no, actually, it was rec recent that I had to, you know, assess my priorities and get realistic. Like, you know, give up rock star, or, or I'll have to, uh, you know, how can I be an actor and go on tour and that kind of thing? Yeah. And, Got to support yourself. Yeah. Who's Johnny Castle? I mean, you play Johnny Castle in this film. Who is he? He's a he's a low class kind of guy from South Philadelphia that's good with the ladies, and uh, in return he gets gold bracelets and silk shirts, and uh, and uh, he it's set in 1963, and he went to Arthur Murray School of Dance to have a way to do this stuff and um, make a living and doesn't feel real good about himself and runs into this hot little number uh, who's just about ready to grow up and I'm gonna get myself in deep so no, no, no. <laughs> did he remind you at all of a middle-class guy from Houston who took up dancing early and wasn't yeah. really sure it's what he wanted to do and yeah lower middle-class guy from Houston um, yeah, and trying to sort it out. And, and we'll let everybody in on that. You're from Houston, and yeah, you took it up early. And uh -huh. I just called it middle class, but you say, well, well yeah, lower middle class. Yeah. So lower. the film, the film then had some poignant moments for you. I mean, you, you kind of saw yourself in Johnny. A yeah, bit. yeah. The, I mean, that was a level of identification for me that, um, you know, I grew up not having it be too easy to be a dancer in in Texas. Why they thought that was a little swishy. Yeah, you 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 bound you're bound to be weird if you dance. Hmm. Uh, 
so on that level, I could identify with Johnny. I didn't, you, I didn't go to Arthur, Arthur Murray School of Dance to learn ballroom dancing, but... <laughs> yeah. In this film, though, you teach Baby Houseman, who is, who is Jennifer Grey, you teach her how to dance. In, in this case, since you were the, the one who was professionally trained in this and, 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 and for a long time, did art imitate life? Well, yeah, because you know, like the fun part about this kind of dancing is, is like your you have to your bodies have to really become one in order to move as one. So, uh, uh, in other words, I had to learn how to be a real good partner in order to lead correctly. Let's show a clip because in this one you're doing some of the some of the work with uh, with Jennifer, but I think this one's at, at sea. Did you learn to be a at dancer? Sea. Well, this guy came into this luncheonette one day and. You know, we were all sitting around doing nothing. And he said that Arthur Murray was given a test for instructors. So if you passed, they teach you all these different kinds of dances, show you how to break them down, how to teach them, you know. What? No. What is dirty dancing supposed to say to today's teens about those of 25 years ago? Well, I don't know. You can always, um, I guess, not to believe uh, what mommy and daddy and, and social standards tell you that you, you are stuck in this little box and can never get out of it, but that you can have your dreams come true. Yeah. But we all can if you work hard enough. I, I think that's what, what Baby teaches Johnny, you know, that he, he believes he's, he's going to always be, a, you know, uh, a, a street kid, you know, and, and, and that's just all he'll ever be. Um, no matter what he does, and uh, they they help each other. I think we all have that that person in our lives, somewhere in our um, somewhere in our memory that um, we sort of hold dear. You know, the, the, this person that passed through our lives for one moment and was gone, but you'll never forget. Sounds like you want to be a good enough answer. No, it's a good answer. <laughs> Sounds like you want to be a rock star again. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> Patrick, it's good to you. Come on back and visit us. Okay. okay. All these years later, that movie still pulls at people's heartstrings. That's all for today's Pop Start Plus. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. Have a good one. Welcome to today all day. All day. Today all day. All day. This is a long oh, way of asking, man, yeah, who's your okay. favorite character you've ever oh, played? Right. The unicorn. The unicorn. you got to have the unicorn. <laughs> what is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice things? Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. I don't want the wrath of Luna. <laughs> when I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cut. Cold Cut. Hi, buddy Cal. Cooking with me. Dad's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? Heart Smart Today. With simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit <laughs> now. How wow. good do they look? I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. This morning, a story of people helping people. You've received tons of letters from people who have been inspired. Let's do the weather out. <laughs> OK. All you got to do is say, it's cold, it's warm, it's raining, it's snowing. That's it. One of our most favorite yes. franchises ever, wow. Ambush Makeovers. Okay. Look at it. It doesn't, it doesn't look, look so good. No, it doesn't look good. Will you judge okay. us in a cook-off? I yes. will, and okay. you guys will definitely win something. Today, all day. All day? All day. Welcome to Today, All Day.
It is hard to believe it has been nearly 30 years since our next guest burst into the Hollywood scene. Back in the 90s, Scott will star as Bailey in the hit show Party of Five. These days, Scott is starring in a new Netflix film about a couple of underdogs. It's called Rescued by Ruby. It focuses on a Rhode Island state trooper who hopes to join an elite canine unit with a shelter dog as his partner. Scott plays the man in charge of the unit. I know how much you want this. How long you've waited. I'm a short guy. I barely made the height requirement. I had to work twice as hard to get to the same place as everyone else. I'm used to working 10 times harder. Like a guy who lists his shortcomings right off the bat. Scott <laughs> is here, and his wife Kelly joining us as well. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The cutest thing ever. They both just said, I love you right before right. this. Still not right like before this segment started. <laughs> A last minute reminder. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, so Scott, cute. you said you knew right away, as soon as you saw this script, that this was the movie you'd been waiting for. I did, I did. And not just because the character was uh, a short guy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, the movie has incredible heart. You yes. know, uh, I think we all love a dog movie. I think these days to have something that's going to fill us with some joy and some positivity is always a great thing. But this was not your average dog movie. It's a true story based on this young Rhode Island State Trooper whose lifelong dream was to be a canine officer. He himself uh, struggles. You know, he has attention issues um, and he can't afford one of these expensive dogs that are usually trained for this work. So... It's this beautiful story of these two creatures who, on their own, are struggling to mm -hmm. find what's best in them. And through meeting each other, they bring that best out. Mm -hmm. And they always say, you know, working with children and dogs, you don't do. That's right. How, how was it working with <laughs> I have to say dog? it was incredible. So this a dog named Bear uh, mm -hmm. was the dog they cast to play Ruby. Uh, had no experience in was front of Was it really a, a dog from a shelter or something yes, like that? Yes, I saw yes. that in the credits. I was like, wait, what? It's incredible. I mean, the whole movie but, uh, on camera and behind the scenes is an incredible advertisement for rescuing animals. Mm -hmm. um, and in this case, yes, this dog was saved and uh, and we're making a star so of him. Cute. For anybody watching, this is such a good movie. I was just telling them I watched it with my nine-year-old son last night and he was at the edge of his seat and it felt safe watching it there was, yeah. you know it was like it reminded me of like lassie back in the day i mean it's just such a feel-good movie did you get an education too working with the dogs and a hundred percent yes i mean uh, you know one of the great things about being an actor is you get exposure to some of these worlds you wouldn't have otherwise so meeting real canine uh teams the humans and the partners mm -hmm. we shot on vancouver island and some of the people you'll see in the movie are actual canine That's cool. uh, teams oh. from from the local department they were technical support, but they also shared their wisdom and their knowledge and their love of the work mm -hmm. they do. So it's kind of a love letter to people yeah. that do this it's incredibly good. important search and rescue work. Mm -hmm. So it's Rhode Island. Uh, did you have to work really hard to get the accent there? We worked <laughs> on it. Yeah, it is tricky. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I had this little vocal exercise. There's this actor that I've always loved named Ron Eldard. So I would say Ron Eldard shops at Pottery Barn. Oh, okay. And he walks to the house saying this, by the way. It's <laughs> and hysterical. it becomes Ron Eldard shops at Pottery Barn. The pottery Barn. Ah. Ah. It's funny you say this because <laughs> it, this is a movie about a dog, and my husband and I, he's from Boston. Yeah. I don't think that dog and log rhyme. Mm. He thinks dog and log rhyme. That's right. Oh, that's you're right. right. Dog. Yep. Dog. Yeah, Harry, yeah, yeah. Gary, oh, that's oh, another oh, one, right? Oh, like, oh that's yeah. funny. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and Grant Gustin, who people might know from The Flash and mm -hmm. an all around incredible guy yeah. and great actor, he and I would just kind of stay in the accent throughout the day, mm -hmm. and it made it easier to not. Pull in and out of it, but it was really, yeah, it was really. Yeah, cool. it's, it's it. tough to do. Yeah. Hey, um, Kelly, did you do you do you do you know where the box of VHS tapes from? Party of oh, five I do. The house. I know. Exactly Have you, dusted, you showed them to the kids? <laughs> what are, what? We talk about this a lot. Like, we're not sure what the age is to sort of dip back into that That's and show funny. them. You, you'd have to guide that train. How old are they now, your kids? Our oldest is 12. So he's right there, yeah. right? There were some yeah. mature I think he could. subject yeah. matter. 12, well, yeah. you have nine and seven. Yeah. Right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Well, you're, well, you were saying about the movie being comfortable and safe. Mm -hmm. I feel that way about Party Five, but I think it kind of dipped into some heavy oh, yeah. topics. Some heavier Sometimes. storylines. But if we watched so, along with them, mm -hmm. and yeah. so we could have conversations yeah, could about, about the about more it. mature yeah. stuff. Well, before you leave us this morning, let's talk about, you have a book, a new book. It's called Flow. Yes. Tell us about, about it. For today. Yeah. So we were talking about how much worry everybody has right now. It's at an absolute fever pitch. Mm -hmm. And Flow stands for 
finding love over worry. Oh. Um, it's also wolf spelled backwards. Oh, so, oh look at that. that this, by the way, story. flow came that, first, yeah. and I saw that <laughs> second, which was he held it up in the mirror, amazing. and all of a sudden, yeah. yeah. But what you were saying, Al, too, I agree. We have a better way. We can do things with our mind as well, mm-hmm. and all that stuff about menopause was kind of scary. Yes, right. I think things like flow and what's in this book can sort of help us to challenge that and not drop into worry and not drop into fear. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That is really yeah. what, that's what we need. Do you have a quick tip um, for us? I say a lot, so it's it's all thought work. It's how we're choosing to look at the world. Um, but in this case, it's probably not where you would think. We have to be moving our bodies. We have to have food in the morning, nourishing food. We need yeah. to take a time to just quiet our minds. Mm-hmm. And I really prioritize that. In the beginning okay. of the book, before I get into the Harder stuff. The, it's not hard. Details. It's not hard at all. It's quite oh, simple. Scott and Kelly, yeah. thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. What a joy. So good. Uh, thank you. You're just pure light. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. We are going to start with some good news. We've got each other now. Doesn't it just weekend. feel good to be back to it school? It does. Yes. This is so healthy. Here's what's happening in your The crowd is ready. SG, you ready? Refresh and reorganize for fall. Start today. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. You open the door for so many people. I love working with people. I did not do any of this by myself. Hello! Lizzo, you put a smile on every single face. It feel like Christmas and my birthday or something. (laughs) We will meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. After a two-year break, the world's ugliest dog contest returned over the weekend. With hopefuls from far and wide a gathering together in Petaluma, California. Okay, but when all was said and done, there could really only be one winner, and it was Mr. Happy Face, a 17-year-old Chihuahua mix. And right now, we're so happy, happy to welcome him to our plaza along with his owner, Janita Benali. Did I say your name right, Janita? You did. Well, I mean, how is Mr. Happy Face taking this newfound fame? I'm not sure that he has, it's been fully realized. <laughs> I think he, is, he had his first airplane ride, which okay. was really exciting. Aww. And this is quite possibly the most people that he's ever seen. Oh my yeah. gosh. <laughs> well, it's all in good fun. We, I always feel kind of bad because we're sitting here saying it's the world's right. ugliest dog, which, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Absolutely. How did you get involved in, in entering him into this contest? So it's actually a really strange story. I wanted something different to do for my birthday. Um, I'm not from Petaluma, I'm from Arizona, and I was just in town, and I reserved a chunk of time to mix and edit uh, a radio show that I'm piloting for youth empowerment called Indigenous Youth Nation. Yeah. And we had, uh, my niece had said, we're gonna be there and you should enter Mr. Happy Face. Oh. And I was like, no, he's too beautiful. Oh. Like, his soul is right. too beautiful. You'll come in last place. Yes, that's exactly Where what I thought. Where did you get Mr. Happy Face? So oh. I adopted Mr. Happy Face from a shelter. Uh-huh. And um, he came from a hoarding situation uh. and um, where he was very badly abused and neglected. And uh. it took a long time for him to feel okay with human touch. Oh, and wow. h- how old is he? He's 17, right? 17 is what I was told. 17 years old. The name itself, Mr. Happy Face, how, how, did, you, how did you land on that? <laughs> I landed on Mr. Happy Face because he, when I met him at the shelter, uh, he, he was, I asked to see the most uh, unadoptable dog. Okay. Um, after my first choice had been already adopted, and I had already made the drive, so he came hobbling out, Aww. and he was Aww. so happy. Like he just—he looked happy. Like his 
You don't see it now, but he has this enormous tongue that is <laughs> no, almost we see as it. long. Is it, is it oh no, this is time? this is not it. Oh, oh that's really? That's this is a sample. Oh, it's like an iceberg. Yeah, so this is a sample, <laughs> but it it's is an iceberg. almost. You only see the tip right. of it. I get it. Underneath yes. is yes, a whole other huge, tongue. Yes. Oh, yes, there but is. Mr. Happy Face beat eight other pups. What do you think it is about Mr. Happy Face? Is it the the mohawk? The enormous tongue, the the head tilt, like what? What was it at the end of the day? I think it's that he has this incredible capacity to show so much love, uh, and I think that that's really what came through. Is that the world is, it can be ugly enough, yeah. you know, and so if we can just add a little bit of like kindness and compassion, yeah. then we yeah. can just make yeah, this whole world so Janita, much more beautiful. You have a lot of love too. <laughs> I love that you went in there and said, "Show me the unadoptable dog," and said, "That's going to be my pet." You're amazing. Thank you Thank so you. much. Really congratulations. appreciate having congratulations. you here. Congratulations. Yeah. What do you win? What did? Uh, so we actually won a trip to be here at the Today Show. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Okay. Oh, Look at that smile. Thank you so much, Janita. All right, it's time to get our game on. And today we're playing one of our favorites. It's called Doggle Ganger. Yeah, Hoda, this is your favorite this, this time. Okay, so just as a reminder, Hoda, you're playing for Haley. Of course. And Jenna, you are playing for Paula. Okay, so as a refresher, here's how it's going to work. Okay. You two will be alternating. You'll see on the screen a person and three dog options. It is your job to choose which dog belongs to its owner. Okay, this got game it. Is this really is so Last easy. Last time you said it was all in the eyes. Let's see what your tactic okay. is this time. Right? Okay, so the person, in order to ring in, you have to stand on the corresponding Wait, paw ring print. In. Yeah, no, we just we're walk versus over. each other. Yeah, no, we go one at a time. You're one. You're one at a time. Yeah. But you know, okay. ring in. Okay. okay. And then if it's not your turn, you will be waiting in the doghouse. Do you have dog ears on? So do you. You do have dog ears. Yeah. Dalmatian and a, and a little brown puppy. Okay. So sweet. sweet. Okay, okay Hoda, you're up first. Are okay. you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, Miles, let's put them on up. Okay, this is Miles from New Rochelle, New York. <laughs> oh, simple. Miles B. Unfortunately, oh, it's B. That dog is oh, so it was sad. A. It's A. That's his dog's name is Sadie. Sadie, that's okay. okay. It's okay, it's, it's okay. Right. okay. Okay, Jenna, ready? Yes. Good I'm luck. Great at this game. Go this ahead. is Lauren from Houston, oh, Texas. Oh, I know this one. It's the most obvious of all. Oh, is that what you're going to go for too? She doesn't get to steal. No, I know. I was just wondering. Go no. ahead. That is incorrect. You know where I was going? <laughs> I knew it was C. You know why? Because it looks like C <laughs> would be right. That's not true. That's her lab. Her Woody. No, but look at the f eyes. Fine. Okay. It's the eyes. Zero, okay. zero. This game's going well. Hold up. This yeah. is Ellie from New York, New York. Is it A, B, or C? Sorry, this is a layup. <laughs> yes, you are right. Slam dunk. <laughs> that is Ellie's dog. That's Chris. called boo. Okay. <laughs> Getting this right this time. <laughs> All right, Jenna. <laughs> Did you just call me a boom? No, I said boom. This is C, our former graphics C. coordinator from Tampa, Florida. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, is it A, well, B, we know C, or so. I know C, C, but do you know C's dog? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> no. Oh, oh, wow. Wow. Oh, what just happened? I'm just going to tell you what went down here. Roop, no, roop, I'm going to tell you what went down. Roop, Let roop, me tell you what went down. Roop, Jenna was roop, here, roop, roop, and you roop. you looked at her like, no. So yeah, Jenna, I didn't wait, mean wait, to. Wait, wait. So then Jenna went like this. That's not true. I see. I know the contact. See, there they are. I've you seen that picture. I, I'm sorry. I did <laughs> not. Um, <laughs> I did not realize I made a face. I will cover my face like this. No, I didn't mean to. I swear. But that's her dog toast. That's okay. We're going to give you that point. Okay. Okay. Karma will come All right, hold on. I'll give you a face this time. Ooh. This no is faces, no Mallory faces. from Athens, faces. Georgia. Hold on. Let me think for one second. Mallory, Mallory, Mallory. <laughs> Unfortunately, no, it's it A. Was a. And that's so her dog. Easy. Look at her eyes. <laughs> but C is one of my favorite kind of dogs. Now. This, <laughs> this game is really Well, you guys are tied, actually. Okay. You're doing well. Right. Tied. Okay. <laughs> Jenna. This is Nora from Columbus, hey, Nora. Ohio. A, uh -huh. B, or C? You do not know. Oh, I know. It's locked in. Go ahead. You pick one. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Is it ducky? <laughs> Skinny dog? <laughs> or puppy? <laughs> or puppy? I'm no! It's wrong. Sorry, wrong. it was Skinny Dog, and that's what I was gonna pick. The <laughs> Italian Greyhound named Dog. Gio. Okay, you have to you have to look away. No, wait, 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 wait no. No, you didn't get, get two. It was one. Okay, one. No, wait. I have two. I got the you other one. Two, I got yeah. C's dog. If you remember correctly. Oh, after that. 
Go okay, ahead. Hoda. This, this is, is Rachel and Michael from New York, New York. They do they both look like their dog? That is. Hold on, let me look. It's so well, easy. This is really like a siblings or dating game too. <laughs> Cuddly. They're beautiful Our games couple. Are super brilliant. <laughs> it's hard. You got it. That is correct. That's their mini golden doodle Jagger. Okay. Wow. Okay, it's tied, guys. Okay, tie tie breaker. To me. Ready? Wait, okay. Tiebreaker. No, this is for this is for both of you can get okay. this. Okay, good. We'll each pick. Either of you can pick. Okay, good. Okay. This is Jackie from Canahan, Illinois. Go ahead and pick yours. He looks like Blake. There he goes. Go ahead. Jenna, you are the winner. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That is her dog the name. Bow, wow, Cinda. wow, yippee <laughs> Bow, wow, wow, yippee yo, yippee Bow, wow, yippee yo, yippee Do you still think this is your favorite? Do you I still do love this game. Okay, good. I love this game. Okay, good. I love the game. Good. Team Jenna wins. That means the folks at Bed Bath & Beyond Sorry, are sending Haley. Paula a three hundred dollar gift card. But don't worry, we're sending Haley a, a Hoda and Jenna T-shirt. She does. Haley loves that. Haley All loves right. it. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Donna. Okay. <laughs> Thank if you, you want to be part of Donna Rama, head to HodaandJenna.com. Hit the connect button. News is happening now. Are you ready? Look at what's making headlines around the world right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, top story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to you today. We've got a lot to celebrate yes. on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody's good, and that's it. Yeah. From New Orleans, nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. And what do you love about fatherhood? The chaos, the learning. Is climate change one of your top priorities? What's your message to girls who want to make a difference in their own communities? Believe in yourself. NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Wouldn't it Beatles. be great to know first thing in the morning? <laughs> I we, think we hear Rucker now. Clip out his mic before Clip something bad happens. Uh, yeah, because I think he's one of the best. I definitely don't want to hear that. Up a day is in store. Do you ever like to know that? Yeah, we don't have a crystal ball, but we do have something perhaps even better. 13-year-old Noodle the Pug oh, and his human, Jonathan Graziano, <laughs> together. They have been setting the daily tone for millions of people all around the world. Take a look. It all started with a single adorable TikTok back in August. Uh, you are here just in time for another round of No Bones, uh, which is the game where we find out if Noodle has bones this morning or not. All oh, right, so we found that he does not have bones this morning. Noodle the Pug has since become a daily harbinger of our collective battle. Do we really want to get out of bed? And millions across social media are turning to 13-year-old Noodle to find answers. Every morning, Noodle's owner, Jonathan Graziano, attempts to roust Noodle out of his slumber. If he flops down, it's a no-bones day. So it's a no-bones morning, no-bones morning time to lay low and maybe not take any risks. So like if today was the day you were planning to call your sister and tell her you just hate her husband, like today is not the day to do that. If Noodle remains standing, it's a Bones Day. Oh my gosh, oh it's a Bones Day, look at that. Time to head out into the world and tackle the day with gusto. You know what that means, treat yourself today, get that extra guac, buy that jet ski. There have been over 200 million TikToks alone about this wise old sage in the form of a pug. If it's a no bones day, I just stay in bed. 
One user even claiming they were talking about him at the Pentagon. A lieutenant colonel at the Navy Pentagon legitimately just started this briefing with, I don't know if it's a bones or no bones day, so let's just get started. Noodle the Pug might not be a matter of national security, but at least he's keeping us all entertained. Well, Aww. we are having a bone day because we're so <laughs> excited to meet Noodle and Jonathan. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Up, Thank Noodle? you. <laughs> Thank you so much for having us. So like, this is just crazy. like Noodle's thing since you've had him all these years. Yeah, like I I adopted him when he was seven and a half years old, and we just learned very quickly that in the mornings, if he is not ready to wake up or go yeah. on a walk, yeah. he's he's gonna do what he can to prevent that from happening. Well, I know you hear from people when, when good things happen. Yeah. So what good fortune has your puppy brought to people? So Noodle has brought joy to so, so many people online. I, I can't believe it. There's this no bones video is, is something that I would just do as a silly little ritual for us in the morning to check in and see how he was doing. And then it took off and people yeah. started using it as a forecast for how their day was going to go. And I leaned into it. You know, we all need a little positivity right now. Yeah, and, yeah, well, extra guac. I'm, yeah, I'm and extra guac. I'm, well, I'm especially if it's from the internet. The internet's going to do something nice. Like, let's roll with yeah, it. Yeah, totally. Let's roll Jonathan, with it. Yeah. To be clear, though, like, a no bones day doesn't necessarily mean a bad day, right? No, thank you. We really need to change the narrative on a no bones day. I think a bones <laughs> day. Seriously, if you're listening. <laughs> so a bones day is a day where you just have to go after your ambition or a task you weren't you were yeah. putting off. You know, a no bones day is a day where you just have permission to, you know, wear soft clothes. Self-care. Yeah, self-care, self -care. take a yes. bath. Yes. Can we Mental can we bath. see if today's gonna be a bones day or Would no you want a wager day? on this? Oh, I'm all, I'm all about a wager. Wait, is there anything about you... the television appearance that's taking Noodle out of the routine so, every day? So, the television appearance, and there is a table full of cheese over here oh, to yeah, my yeah, left, yeah, which yeah, yeah, he, yeah. you Lydia can Bastianich. see he is, he is... Noodle is looking at Lydia, Lydia Bastianich yeah. right Lydia's now with there. loving eyes. Uh, <laughs> he knows about this, let but me tell you. We will take this answer for gospel, right? Yeah, okay. we have to. We have to. Okay, okay, we're ready. All right, well, I think... I'm going no bones. I'm going bones. I'm going bones. I'm going bones. I think it's... I'm going to go no bones as well. I'm taking no bones because... Let's I think it's, I want a, I want to have a no bones day. <laughs> you just, we okay. want sweatpants. Yeah. Person. Okay. Yes. Ready? Take your time. Take, Take your time. time. Yeah. Take your time. I know it all. Lay down, buddy. Get up. Lay down. Lay down. Bones day. Bones. Yeah. It's a bones day. Oh, I have to go to the gym now. Oh, you did so. I know, unfortunately, you have to. It was the cheese, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It was the cheese. You're pretty spectacular, too, Jonathan. We should you are yeah. everything. I really. Said, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. This, this dog Thank is you my so joy. And oh. Does this surprise you what has happened since last August when you put this oh. thing up? Oh, I mean, oh, he's getting out. You're yes. taking, oh, like, it's an extra bonus. This is yeah. a weird temperature of our country, and, yeah. and like, you're sort of setting the agenda for society. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, which I had no intention of doing. I had no intention of that, but it's it's. It's been overwhelming. It's been overwhelming. It's been a really incredible. Again, it's been so positive. I get mentions from people who say they, you know, they they were waiting. You know, it was a bones day, so they decided to propose to their partner. Aww. It was a, you know, they put a down payment on their house. A woman the other day said it was a bones day, so she bought a lotto ticket and won half a million dollars. No way! Oh my what? gosh! Serious bones day. She'll be on, you she'll be on the show tomorrow. The I, can't, I gotta book her. I can't yeah. keep up with it. Like I cannot keep up with it, and it's just so. Um, he is. He's yeah. the, he's the light of my life, and to get to share him wow. with people is wow. really, really special. Well, he is oh, yeah, really. Oh wait, now it's no bones. Now it's no bones. That was the moment. Our rule is that all he has to do is show us. Bones, and then he can, oh, and then he can do it. Right. Yeah. By the way, John, God bless you for adopting yeah. Noodles later in life, Thank too. You. There's a lot of love there. Thank you. It's Thank one you. of the things about all this that's been, you know, it has, again, it's been so positive, and people have been so nice about yeah. it, but it, I'm so keen oh. to let people know, like, I adopted Noodle, and he was seven and a half years old, yeah. and yeah. there were, he was loved his whole life, but yeah. he just needed, he needed to find yeah. a new home, and yeah. there are so many dogs out there that are in yeah. the exact same boat, and I, awesome. I got the jackpot. If you ever, Thank like, you. need any, like, dog sitting, what Noodle yeah. can yeah. say. We love Noodle. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. These are our missing daughters and sons. We need anyone who saw something to come forward. She was wearing a black jacket, a black top. I'm going to bring my son home alive. Dateline, missing in America. Listen to the full season now. Welcome back to you today. we got a lot to celebrate yes. on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody good, and that's it! Yeah. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this?
Good morning. Welcome to today. This is so healthy. Doesn't it just weekend. feel good to be back to it school? Does. Start today. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. This is so healthy. Doesn't it just feel good to be back to it school? Does. Start today. Hey, Donna, we Hi. ready to play. Hi, ladies. Right. I'm ready, too. Okay. All right, let's find out our favorite part. Who you're playing for. Okay. And on Team Hoda, it's Peckaday Hyman from Lake Charles, Louisiana. Lake Charles. Yes. Go, Peckaday. And on Team Jenna, we have Julie Frady from Chicago, oh, yeah, Julie. Illinois. I call her Jules. You do, All right. you. Well, let's see who's going to win this time. This is an important game because okay. before we start, we've added something new. Okay. A tiara. Oh, my gosh. A Donnarama <laughs> tiara? Right now, this is because right now the two of you are tied in Donnarama wins. Oh, this is the end? Starting, no, it's not the end. It's just the beginning, some would say. But <laughs> starting today, if you win the round, you will be crowned the Donnarama <laughs> champ of the week. And isn't there nothing you want more than nothing. to be crowned? Nothing yes. I want. Okay, so now to the game. Since it's National Bring Your Dog to Work Day, hmm. we're bringing back Doggleganger. Doggleganger. Uh, I love this. I remember it well. Yeah. But here's how it works. I'll okay. show you a picture of one of our viewers and three dogs, and okay. you'll have to guess which dog belongs to the human game. on the screen. Okay. okay. We'll alternate, All right. and this week, Jenna, you're up first. Oh, great. Let's do okay. it. Okay. Jenna, here is Carly from Ocean City, New Jersey. Okay. Carly. I think Carly's do doggleganger is B. You are correct, what? Jenna. How did you know it? Love That's her. her dog, Lily, and she's okay. an Irish cream golden. Okay. Wait, I need to have the monitor here. I can't see. Come on. <laughs> not, I can't see it. It's Let's push that monitor position. a little closer. Yes. Okay, hold up. This is PJ from Morristown, Tennessee. Mm. PJ from Easy. Morristown. Oh, simple, her. simple, simple. This is such a layup. Sure is. It is... B! Yes! <laughs> Hoda, good job. That's his dog, Miles, and he's a here. Another one for you. Okay, tied. <laughs> Jenna, this is Nikki from New York. Okay, Nikki. Wow, Nikki looks just like... <laughs> oh, I got Nikki. Just like C. Oh, no, no. right, A. Oh, I was going to pick C, too, actually. Well, that's her that was Winnie my toy that's, poodle. I feel like that's a trick. That was hard. That was, I mean, all of these are pretty, Don't you know. Don't worry, Pekka Day. We have another one coming. <laughs> it's okay. okay. Yeah, I okay. like that we're calling her Jules. Okay, Hoda. This is Tevin from Nashville, Tennessee. Okay, Tevin, don't you worry. I'm just focusing. Sweet eyes. I'm going with A. You know, I would have guessed B. A, but it's C. Oh, C. That's Amos, oh, and he's a two-year-old Boston Terrier. No, the cutie. There's a science behind it. It's very sad. It's, it's the sorry, eyes. Pekka it's Day. the eyes. Okay. Okay, Jenna, this is Benton from Nolensville, okay. Tennessee. Oh, oh how sweet. I know, Benton's adorable. Oh, I, I know Benton. I think Benton looks just like... B. You are correct. Oh, yeah, so by they're the way, both adorable. Ringers, and that's, that's Graham Cracker. How cute. Oh, that's his Graham name. Cracker. Graham oh, Cracker. That's what I called my Cabot grandma. Too. Graham Cracker. Okay, hold up. Here is Cheryl from Atlanta, Georgia. Hang on, Cheryl. Oh, Cheryl, you're B. Wow. Oh, yes, that is Pippa. You know, I, the it, hair was the, it was the it was the high pony <laughs> yes. that gave it away. Yeah, I agree. And Pippa, what a cute name. Yeah. Okay, Jenna, this is Dr. Jonathan from Fort Mill, South Carolina. Okay, well, Dr. Jonathan oh, yeah. I got looks it. just like A. Mm -hmm. You know what? It's C. Oh, what? I was between A and C. I know. I would have been between A and C, too. Now that's a hard one, yeah. That's Buddy Bichon Frise. Uh -huh. Okay, Hoda. This is Michael from Washington, D.C. A, B, or C? Michael, you're A all the way. Yeah, I know. Is that kind of a no-brainer? Yeah, it was a gimme. <laughs> I can tell. Them together. The dog's name is Dolly. So oh, wait, cute. that's it? No. Oh, wait, Jenna gets well, one chance to talk. No, you went first. Yes, that's actually it. Can I wow. have my tiara? Hoda, yes, you absolutely <laughs> can. 
Look at the day. Team Hoda wins the folks too. at Barnes & Noble are sending Peckaday a $300 Peck -a -day. gift card. But don't worry, Jenna. Julie, you are getting a Barnes, you are getting a Hoda and Jenna <laughs> mug and t-shirt. Oh, and your Julie, I know, don't you look adorable. adorable? Thank you, my mom got them for me. Oh, okay. your mom is so Wait, cute. This that is tiara so is lovely. It fits you so nicely, and it matches with the pink. It's a little are you gonna small, wear it all but day? <laughs> no, thank you. No. no, really, Hoda, you if should. If you want to be part of Donna Rama, because <laughs> you can't move, right? Head to hodaandjenna.com, hit the connect button. Over the years, I've been lucky enough to step into the Today Show kitchen and watch the best chefs from around the world teach us some incredible recipes. We had made that pesto, which was, oh, exactly. darn. Well, you know, I almost got out of this one, please. Awesome. Turn it down. Oh, my God. I had one job. None of which I've mastered because, well, I actually don't know the first thing about how to cook. But I'm hoping to put that all behind me. Today, cookbook author and Southern comfort food extraordinaire, hostess with the mostess, Elizabeth High School, is here to teach me the basics of how to cook. She's gonna be my guide as I attempt to make steak two ways. First, marinated skirt steak with roasted pepper and onions, and then a steakhouse style filet mignon with roasted Brussels sprouts. I've been waiting a long time to use that cast iron pan. Frankly, I've been avoiding it, but no more. So let's get started. Again. I know, I'm so excited. You are my Obi-Wan to is my Luke it. Skywalker. This is it, honey. I promise we're going to make it happen. And I mean, honestly, who does not love a perfectly cooked steak? I love a steak. Everybody does. And I swear, I swear, it's so much easier than you could ever imagine, okay? okay. This is our plan. Marinate the skirt steak, cut and prep the vegetables, grill the skirt steak, sear, baste, and finish the filet mignon, let the meat rest, Cut and serve. All right, so here is our marinated skirt steak. Go ahead and get this out. Do I just go to the butcher and say, I want skirt steak? Exactly. They won't laugh at me. No, let's unfold him. Why do we call it skirt steak? It's just that cut of meat. It goes actually at, under the abdomen. That oh, is yes, exactly, exactly like, where it, it goes. It like fits you, oh, right, the waist. Now, okay. Yes, if you have a piece of meat that is as big as your waist, yes. you're going to want to cut it. Yes. Okay? So we're going to cut this into four pieces so that we can manage it in our, um, in our skillet. Now, okay? is this one of those against the grain things? Not right now. After we cook it, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Okay. But right now, I just need you to cut this into cut four pieces. Okay, I got it. Yep, yeah. Nice, long, good. Very, look at you. Oh, I think I'm, look, we get some skills. We're just going to measure out all of our ingredients for our marinade okay. and put them right in the bag. Cheers. I mean, seriously, it's Wednesday. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Only on days that end with Y. <laughs> Those are the only days I drink. Okay, let's go. One quarter cup packed light brown sugar. This I know how to do because of bacon. Now, and remember this. Yes, open this up. This is kind of interesting. So we put a little piece of bread in here. Why? Uh, well, because it's going to keep the brown sugar from getting hard. This is very soft brown I'm sugar. I'm telling you, that's because of the bread. Roll it in there. Let's okay. do our soy. Two tablespoons soy sauce. One tablespoon, One tablespoon of balsamic. Very good. One can chipotle in adobo well, sauce. First, it's tomatoes, onion, garlic is oh. making the sauce. It's earthy, it's smoky, and it's going to add another depth of flavor to this marinade. So let's chop this up. Okay. We want to chop Are it up. Are we chopping up all the no, all uh, No, that would set us all on fire. And so we want it to be, you're good. Okay. Yep. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And then once you kind of get through, mm -hmm. Then you can always go back over it. Yeah, like I would just, my instinct would be to kind of like do this thing. Uh, very nice. Yes, look, that, see, did you just see that? Instinct. Instinct. You're getting it, you're getting okay. it. So because it's a little bit of a tougher piece of meat, mm -hmm. that's why we're going to marinate this. Now okay. listen, you can do this for eight hours. We would love 24 hours. You mean marinating? Exactly. So, I mean, if you ran home and, you know, even if you only had an hour, you know, that's going to be good. So First, we want to pull me. all of this air out of this. Okay. Oh I'm God. sorry. That's one of my favorite parts. I don't know Did why I love loving that. I love I you. <laughs> sake, I love you. And so then what we'll do is massage it. Do you feel like this is I do. fully coated? I think coated? you've done an absolutely beautiful job with that. And then, yes, that is going to go into the fridge to marinate. And so we'll okay. just put it back here. All right. 
So now we finished our marinade and we're gonna start our roasted vegetables. Okay. And I have got something that is going to change your life when it comes to this. Tell me. So this is, it has all the vegetables that you might wanna roast and then the different times. And you don't have to have a recipe. This is gonna be so freeing for you, honestly. So we're gonna start with our Brussels sprouts. I'm gonna show you and then you're gonna finish. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna cut the end off of it and then we're gonna cut it in half okay. and it's gonna go into our bowl. Okay. okay? What about frozen? Uh, Brussels sprouts. Yeah. Well, what happened? That's is, how we did in the '70s in my mom's well, kitchen. Well, and that is why we didn't like them. Oh, I hated them. They were just when I was a little kid to put one bite of a Brussels sprout. Oh, in my there mouth was, was oh as god, it was close hell on to earth. torture as you could hell imagine. On earth. If you roast them though, it's a whole new world. And then here we are again. You've got those done. Those All are right. beautiful. Set them over here. And that's what we're going to pair with that filet mignon. Okay. And now we're going to move on to our peppers. And so what I like to do is cut it in half. Go ahead and cut it straight just in like half. Uh-huh. Being very careful to see where you're beautiful. And then I just pull this right out. Oh. And then we're going to make nice long slices. You want to keep it even. Mm -hmm. That's one of the main secrets about roasting vegetables mm -hmm. is that they all need to cook and get finished at the same time. What about these white bits? Like so I those, used to cut those out. And sometimes. you can, you can. I want to show you something. Mm -hmm. So if you will hold your knife here, mm -hmm. it's going to give you a lot more security, mm -hmm. and I think you're going to be more comfortable with it. I like your grip. The grip is better. It's so much better because you have more control. And when you have more control of your knife, you're more comfortable. All right, so now we're going to get to our Onions. Oh, onions. How are we doing it though? Dice? Now, we're going to do just like a rainbow. So just a half moon. So we're going to cut it in half. Okay. Both ends off and then keep going. So what we're going to do, we're going to roast all of our vegetables on separate pans because again, well, that sounds like a pain. Get, well, it is, but it's really going to make that much of a difference. When you're only using a few ingredients mm -hmm. and salt and pepper, the technique is so important in making this successful. Okay. okay? I would have thrown so them all I know, the same I know you would have. Who cares? And some of them would have burned, and okay. some of them would have been raw, and then you would have been frustrated and said, I don't know how to roast vegetables. Yeah. Okay, so it's technique. Yeah. You're getting very good with your knife, and I'm proud of you. Well, thank you. I'm working on it. But I do have to be reminded about where to hold it, to grip it. It's like a bat when you when you, when you choke up on the bat. Or your tennis racket. You know yeah, this. I do. If you held your tennis racket with your finger hanging out like that, you wouldn't be worth a damn. Mm -mm. Okay. I'm so. still not worth a damn. <laughs> <laughs> Just FYI, but you, I take point taken. Point taken. So now I want you to generously olive oil these. Okay, there, there we go. Okay. Beautifully coated. Mm -hmm. Good. And that's going to help to ensure that this is going to caramelize. We want it to get that beautiful brown color. Now I see, can't stop. See, I, I know, it's kind of fun, yeah. isn't it? Now we're going to salt it generously. We're going to pepper it generously. Now do I need to like sprinkle, then toss, or just sprinkle, throw it all in there? Sprinkle. Too much? That's, that's a it. lot. That's going to be done. Okay, okay, that's all you need, and then we'll toss it. It kind of helps if you want to you know, go ahead and go in the circle so you're not just dumping it oh, in the middle. Okay. That will kind of help it just okay. a little bit. I would say less pepper than salt, no? And, and that's the great news. It's yours. Okay. So do whatever you want. This recipe is not the boss of you. Yeah. You are the boss of it, okay? Right. Take that recipe. <laughs> I'm not going right, to take it anymore from mix. you. Now, and also at home, listen, if you don't want to pull out three different sheet pans. I don't own three different sheet well, pans. Well, that's the deal. Okay, I get that. You can always separate it. Okay. So you could do Brussels sprouts here, onions here. So let's okay. throw the onions on one. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay, okay pan. I just uh -huh. need to share. Okay. Yes. It says don't crowd the pan. Correct. We keep, do not want to crowd it. These want to keep their social distance. Let's mm -hmm. flip these little guys over oh. because the more surface area that's on the bottom of this pan, okay. the more beautiful they're going to be. Mm. All right, and now we have and one now. more. Spread that. And why out. are we doing three pans again? Because they're all going to cook at different times. Oh, okay. Okay, and if we otherwise, the Brussels sprouts are going to be raw, these are going to be overdone, and yeah. the onions are going to be burnt, and we cannot have that. No. And so now we'll go in the oven with these. Why don't we put peppers and onions on top, and then we will do our sprouts on the bottom. Okay, well that was easy enough. There we go. Now, so what we'll do is we're going to let that cook for a little bit, okay. and then what we want to do is we'll want to rotate the pan. Like just move them around. Exactly. But do I have to flip them? I could get obsessed about flipping each other. You could, over. but you don't need to. Okay. okay. Very nice. That's good. Okay. All right. News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news.
And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Local media Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Local media Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? All right, so now our vegetables are roasting in the oven. You just gave them a nice toss, so we're going to leave those alone for a minute, and we are going to get ready to cook that beautiful skirt steak. Okay. All right, so we'll go ahead and grab that. 24 hours it's been marinating. So, now what we're gonna do is pull it out. We're gonna put it on this paper towel. What will happen when we get ready to cook this? Our amazing. pan is going to be as hot as the hinges of hell. Do you understand me? Okay. And if this marinade is still on here. Like that was droopy. No, you're good. Okay. We're gonna pat it. I mean, we're about to get serious with this. Okay. Because it will end up just steaming it and almost boiling it. Oh. And that's not what we want. We want that beautiful caramelized crust. So we are really gonna get all the moisture out of it. Okay. So we are gonna press on this. We're soaking it up. Now let's come over here. I want you to. Let me just a question. Is yes. this pan hot? Hot as the hinges of hell, honey. It is hot. Do not touch it. Brush it with um, the canola oil. Okay. And that will help it not stick. When we did that marinade, you have to remember that we added a little bit of sugar. We've also got balsamic that has mm -hmm. sugar in it. It's going to smoke a little bit, OK? okay. Smoking now. It, yes, because it, it's hot. So let's turn our vent on, which is that little button right over there. And that's going to pull the smoke up. OK. That vent's over there. How's that going to help? It will. OK. All right, let's okay. put that down. Does it matter which side? No. Just put it down. Woo! Very good. So, but this little bit of smoke, it's going to be so worth it. I promise. Let me get the grandma timer. Grandma timer. Grandma, grandma alert. And um, so literally, it's just going to take three minutes on both sides. Why do we use um, a cast iron pan? Why couldn't I just use a skillet? Oh, honey, because cast iron holds the heat. It cooks so evenly. It really is just the absolute best way when you're getting ready to cook a steak. Now, so, is it hot? It's hot as the hinges of hell. Just kidding. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's You're sticky. Okay. It's, it's broken. No, I it's burned not. It. No, the reason that it's sticky is we had a little bit of sugar in the marinade. But look at that. It's beautiful. Okay. I got to tell you, I would have said that's burnt. No, it's caramelized. That is absolutely gorgeous. Oh my God, I need the jaws of life Calm to down, get this thing breath, up. Calm down, deep breath, deep breath. You're good. There you are. Oh boy. Oh look boy. Look at those beautiful marks. I You're mean, it killing looks it. Pretty. It smells good, but see, this is where I would have felt like I did it wrong. Absolutely not. Okay. That's what you want. That's that wonderful crisp, right. caramelized. Oh, let's get on it. That's the heaven. I mean, come on. You got it. You got it. There you go. It's a stubborn Excellent. one. Okay, three minutes. That grandma. Beautiful. Three minutes on the other beautiful, side. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yes. I think we're right there. We're about there. Let's pull it up. Good. Look excellent, at that. Excellent, it it excellent. doesn't matter what size. Look at how beautiful that is. I must say it is. Let's put it over there and let it rest. Okay. Rest for 10 minutes. Be careful, that pan's hot. I know. The pan is hot. Wait, I'm sorry, is the pan hot? <laughs> let me turn this off. Now it's not hot. And what do you love about fatherhood? The chaos, the learning. Is climate change one of your top priorities? What's your message to girls who want to make a difference in their own communities? Believe in yourself. What do you love about fatherhood? The chaos, the learning. Is climate change one of your top priorities? What's your message to girls who want to make a difference in their own communities? Believe in yourself. 
These are our missing daughters and sons. We need anyone who saw something to come forward. She was wearing a black jacket, a black top. I'm going to bring my son home alive. Dateline, Missing in America. Listen to the full season now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. What do you love about fatherhood? The chaos, the learning. Is climate change one of your top priorities? What's your message to girls who want to make a difference in their own communities? Believe in yourself. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. All right, let's get these veggies out of the All oven right. before I burn them. Ooh, oh, they look good. I See? think they do. And now we've got our onions mm -hmm. and then our peppers. Should those have been browner or does that look good to I you? I think that's nice. Okay. I think that's really good. We're going to use these for fajitas after mm -hmm. we slice that skirt steak up. And then the Brussels sprouts, we'll have this that with our fajitas. beautiful filet. This mignon. is a fajita seed. You are absolutely right. All right, so now we have our vegetables out and we're ready to go with the, the, the filet mignon. Uh, we have two beautiful fillets. They're yes. so cute. Aren't they lovely? There's two. You have one, one for, for me, you. one for you. One for me, exactly. Um, so, salt and pepper generously. If you don't season it well now, you literally have missed the boat. Sure. You said generous. Generously. Uh huh. Sides? Absolutely. If you're going to eat the sides, you want it to be seasoned, right? Okay. Just up there. Good. Very nice. Let's do that on both fillets. And then we'll do the same thing with the pepper. Do you know if I served <laughs> filet mignon to my husband? Oh, he'd lose his mind. I was going to say he'd have a heart attack, not because of the red meat, <laughs> but because I had actually I'm telling you, cooked something. No, He'll just be like, where's and the I love, go? I love how you just did that. That was a oh. pro thing. Ooh, dang that it. was pro. You know what? I don't like things to go to waste. And there you are. OK, how do you think? Good? It's perfect. Okay. Absolutely great, perfect. Great, great. I want you to go ahead and at least smash your garlic. And let's go ahead and pull our rosemary off. Use the side of this. Hold on. Let's like do this? one clove at a time. Oh. And let's turn the knife away from us. Okay? Oh, okay. Good. And then, but I'm gonna smash and then it. you're going to use Should your Should I hand. cut these tips off before or no? Oh, no. It ain't going to do a damn thing. It ain't going to do anything. Okay. Perfect. Good. Now, is that smashed enough? Well, I mean, I, I would have put a little I mean, more effort into it. that doesn't seem that more smashed. Let's do it. Come on. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Very That's nice. Good, That's good, but they're still it. big old. Well, if you want to okay. cut it up, you can. Well, it's not necessary. It's, it's more smash. Just... I want to be smashed. Okay, smash it. Smash it, smash and it. Smash it. And not just with the margaritas. And not just with the margaritas. That's then we... smashed enough, you're saying. You're beautiful. Okay. It's just it's just a quick, easy, okay. you know, it's just a throw in, just okay. a little flavor. Okay. And then we have our rosemary. At least from one sprig, is this the pull-off deal? Ah. Uh, is taught me it? That before. Is it? Is it? Is it? I think it is. Okay. So we'll start at the top, and then you're going to pull back. Good. And now you can do it. And doesn't that make it so much easier? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, and then just pick off the little ones on the end. Mm -hmm. okay. I enjoy brushing oil. Okay. Now, before we go, we're already starting to smoke. Let's get that vent on, OK? Oh, Let's vent. turn the vent on. Hey. OK. Whew. So should we go for it? We're ready. Let's do it. OK. All right, so here we are. Oh, and hear that? So that's nice. That sizzle was ready. How long does it do? I think it's probably going to take about, you know, two to three minutes. We just want to get that beautiful caramelization. We want to lock in all of those juices. This is about like the crust, basically. Very much so. Should I be much. doing something with this butter to get ready for this whole scene? Well, I mean, you could go ahead and cut it. You think that's three times? No, that's not. Like there. Right there. That's right. And I a little that more bacon. isn't going to hurt this. Correct. And just know, Savannah, that smoke is normal. All right. All right? Oh, that's nice. That's very, very good. Isn't that? Nice? And now we want to go side, side, side. Okay, so that's how it should look. I love it. I love it. All right, so now this seems side. like a tricky little thing here. Why? Is You've it three minutes? Okay, is it three minutes on each side? Do you want to go ahead and go ahead and do oh, the yes, other one too? Yeah. Beautiful. Are you just not concerned about my steak, Savannah? As long as yours is what perfect. Okay, yeah. Does so each, let's do a flip. Does each side, like, oh, jeez. 
Oh boy. Oh you can boy. do it. We, mm. Let it Canada. go. All right, and then your guy goes over. I swear it is just like Mr. Miyagi and the Karate Kid. I'm so proud. It really is. I'm so proud Look of it, you. Elizabeth. But I mean, that was beautiful the way you just flipped oh, that. Thank you. You're getting this. There's nothing like low expectations, Elizabeth. <laughs> Fun. All right, let's get that that side right there. You're getting this the bottom, right? Uh, we're still doing sides, and yeah, then we're side, gonna side. Okay, and I still have this too. One more little side there. Very. This one nice. doesn't have another side, interestingly. Okay, so then we have the bottom. <laughs> like some people. Oh. But wait, now should we do the other? This is still a rare side. And should so I do now that? we'll put that one down. Get and on while that end. one's working, mm -hmm. then we're gonna do our little pan sauce. Okay. So we'll add our butter. <laughs> and I'm just throwing it in there. Yeah, throw that in. Fun. And then you can kind of hold the pan with the towel, okay? Be very careful. Mm, and no. now let's add our garlic and our rosemary. Now look how it looks like it's burning. I'm it's sorry. It's not. It's just, okay. it's not. Just it's throw good. this all in. Throw it in. Just sprinkle it around. Very good. And then we have this spoon and we're going to just baste it. Be real careful of that So what's basting? That just pan. spooning it on? Uh -huh. Just fill up a nice big spoon and pour it over. Mm. Oh, look at you. Off to me. Okay, that's it. Come Keep on. going. Is it already like the leaves and the bits are there? Uh huh. Now is it Very bad that nice. I just moved it? It's perfectly fine. Okay. Look at that. I mean, that looks like that's it. Come to mind. That is a tell. That's it. I need that's it right now. That's what you're just looking like for. That. Keep basting. Uh huh. And now we're getting ready. One more baste. When we put our thermometer in, you want to be really careful that we go right into the middle of this steak, okay? okay. If you go all the way to the bottom, it's going to give us a false read. It'll be too okay. hot. Oh. So just stick it in. Let's go all the way to the middle. Right now, we're at 74 degrees on okay. this thermometer. I want to go like in the middle. Uh-huh. Are you in the middle? I feel like I am. Okay, good. So this is going to be a team effort. Look at how it's coming up. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hold this. You're going to put one hand here and one pan there. Yeah. And then we're going to take it to the oven. Oh, but we didn't check the other one. Do you what? want me to take this out? No, no, no. It's fine. They're the same size. They're okay. going to cook just about the same. Do you want me to take this out now? No, it's going to go into the oven with the thermometer. It's an oven read. Isn't that go fancy? In the oven? Well, this is going to stay out. That's going to stay in. Whoa. And okay. we're going to do this together. How we, now the oven's at? hot. Go on in. So if you were at home by yourself, yeah. Yay! You would wait and you would put your you would put your thermometer in now, and then um, you would shut it. And look at it here. Look at there. Wow! Isn't that fun? And then we could even turn on an oven light if we want to look at it in here. So we want to get up to about, well, 127. Okay. Because once it comes out, the temperature is going to raise a few more degrees. Okay. 130 is going to be a perfect medium rare. Okay. So we'll just sit here and let this So you do 127 up. figuring it's going to continue to cook when it's out on the... Correct. It's, How long in the oven is that's it really? why I mean, it's like, what, four minutes, yeah. three minutes? So it's quick. Okay. It is quick, and, so, and that is the thing that's a little unnerving mm -hmm. because no, it's not hard, it's just fast. You just got to be so ready to roll. So sides and ready to roll. I mean, seriously, would your husband not die? And you can do this at home. You'd be dead. I'd be have to step over his <laughs> dead body. He died in shock, and I'm like, excuse me. Well, I made Hold two on, steaks, but now you died in shock. So I'll have to eat both steaks myself. Or one degree. Okay, there we go, 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 go. Okay, now where do I put it though? All right, we're going to put it back on our induction. Okay? Oh, jeez. It's so it's I would okay. be like, it's dead. Be I died Wait, here. Let's focus, focus, Holy deep crap. breath, and we're going to focus. Oh, jeez. This is terrifying. Ah! Shoot. That one's on you. Okay. <laughs> where do I put it? <laughs> right there. It looks incredible. Please, I would if you just look at that? It's absolutely beautiful. Remember that time you burned me with the thermometer? No, I don't. It's a Savannah, hot pan. I don't remember that. So where do I put these? I should take them off yes, the hot take pan. take it off the hot pan. These look delicious. And then let me grab our sprouts. Yeah. And we'll scrape them on. And then this one is going to be done. We'll grab our vegetables. Okay. Is it okay that they've just been sitting on those? They haven't like continued to burn or anything? No, yeah, not at all, not at all. Just kind of add those to this. Teamwork makes the dream work. That's it. So now let's grab our beautiful skirt steak. Mm. It's been resting. Yeah. So now all of those juices have reabsorbed into the fibers. Let's move this here. We can still use those Should tongs. I serve it or no, should I put it No, we're going to cut it. We're oh, going to okay. thinly slice it. 
And this, without a doubt, is probably one of the most important things. We are gonna cut this across the grain. So do you see these long, these long fibers that are yes. going this way? Yeah, All right, so if we were to cut it with those. Yeah, I would have followed then, the line. I mean, if we did this, it is going to be so tough in your mouth, you're not going to be able to chew it. Wow. So then we will cut this way. And you want to kind of do it on the bias. So just a little bit of a um, angle. Okay? Okay. All right, now I know you can do this. Very no, okay, nice. Yoda. Very nice. There is no try, there is only do. Says but look, Yoda. and there you are. I do. I mean, figure that out. Like, this is just have, wonderful. But isn't that funny that like someone figured out at some point that we need to go across the yeah. grain, and now you know what they're talking so this about. This is this, and now I'll go like this. Perfect right? across the grain, and that is going to make sure that every single bite mm -hmm. is so tender and so delicious and so flavorful. Mm -hmm. You're not even going to believe it. It's taking all of my self control not to just start eating this. <laughs> Always remember though, Savannah, that since you're the chef, mm -hmm. you get to have the chef special. What's that? You know, which is just like one little piece, like before oh. it goes. Well, mm, oh, this you gotta make sure it's amazing. Taste you test? know? Okay, let me finish this, and I'm gonna do. Oh, it is. I'm sorry, I'm making you do all the work, and I'm just sitting over here enjoying oh, myself. Oh, I love it. Oh, is it right. really good? Mm -hmm. It's absolutely delicious. I hate these last little bits. It's where I, that's where it's like the risk of mm -hmm. blood is high. Okay, I'm gonna take a little chef's special. But because we did that marinade, the caramelization, you know, it's got that little bit of crunch, that beautiful Real nice. depth of flavor, that little bit of sweetness. Mm. So let's add it to our tray okay. here. Tongs? What? Yeah, let's okay. do tongs. Tongs are going to be perfect. Best steak I ever made. Only steak I ever made, but. Is still. it really? Mm -hmm. You should be very, very proud of yourself. Is, I mean, is this it? Is it dinner this served? This is it, honey. I mean, we can go ahead and take this over to the table. Okay, yay. And I'll grab these beautiful steaks. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. We're coming on the air with breaking news. This is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. You open the door for so many people. I love working with people. I did not do any of this by myself. Hello. Lizzo, you put a smile on yes. every single face. It feel like Christmas or my birthday or something. I can't believe it. Yeah, it doesn't get any better. Oh Absolutely gosh. does oh. not get any better. It looks incredible. And a margarita. But so see, you could serve this with the flour tortillas yeah. and the pico de gallo and cheese, or you could do that with the mashed potatoes and maybe some roasted carrots. Whatever your kids love, now you know how to roast every vegetable that there is. This is the first time I've made a steak and the first time I've roasted a vegetable. Cheers! Not my first margarita. <laughs> no. We Let's are, do this. We're good at this. Mm -hmm. This is so fun. Okay, so what do we do? Let's do a little bit oh, yeah. of this. Come to mama. And then here we are mm -hmm. with those and beautiful roasted vegetables know, that you I love did. It. You know, it's that moment right before you cut into your steak that you kind of take that breath wondering, you know, was it yeah. was it cooked properly? Well, that's what is I, it just like I like look uh, it It's so uh, tender. Oh my gosh. I love this it. is my Christmas card. That's it. That should be absolutely I mean, this looks incredible. That doesn't get okay, any let's better. Taste it. Delicious. I mean, I'm say. I'm sorry. Mm. You killed it. So Absolutely good. killed it. It's so tender. Let me try these Brussels. And I love. Mm. Not mom's frozen. The aromatic of just that little bit of garlic and rosemary that we threw in at the last minute was beautiful. It is really delicious. Okay, now I gotta try skirt steak. 
tender, not chewy, because mm -hmm. we cut it across the grain. And that's the key. I neighbor. might have added a little more salt. And that's fine. Lesson learned. So now you know. We've opened up so many possibilities to you because you saw two ways to make a steak, one with a marinade, one without, and then we know exactly how to roast vegetables. So you've got everything from roasting an onion and peppers, if you wanted to make fajitas, all the way to beautiful Brussels sprouts or butternut squash. I mean, it's unbelievable what you can do now. I know, it's uh, so could you, are you saying that like other cuts of steak I could prepare in the same way? Absolutely, so it doesn't matter whether it's a ribeye, or if you are doing a filet like we did today, it's the same method. It just depends on the cut of the meat. You're either gonna marinate it and have to be very careful with the way you cook it, or you're gonna go sear it on all sides and go in the oven to finish. Just so you've done it. Now I can make anything. You really can. Just, Any just, sort of protein and vegetable. I just have one final question. What is that? Is the pan hot? <laughs> Honey, that pan is hotter than the hinges of hell. <laughs> How about the streak? It's cold as ice. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. I knew from the moment that we had Clifford on the leash and we're walking around the room the first time that this was her dog. The bond between humans and dogs is unlike anything else, something Tiffany Becker knew right away when she saw her eight-year-old daughter, Alexis, and her new four-legged friend. It's a connection that's even more critical when the animal is more than a pal, a trained service dog for those most in need. Hey there, guys, good job. Canine Companions, we provide service dogs for children, adults, and veterans with a variety of disabilities. Puppies are placed with their volunteer puppy raisers when they are about eight weeks of age, and they remain with that individual or that family for the first 18 months or so of their lives. They are then returned for professional training. Alexis suffered from health problems before being diagnosed with hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia, a genetic disorder known as HHT, at two and a half years old. We started visiting the Cincinnati Children's Hospital HHT Center of Excellence. December of 2016, which was her normal scan, uh, we got some very devastating news. That she was regressing in all of her milestones. By September of 2017, Tiffany knew something wasn't right. You could just tell she didn't feel good and something was really wrong. We walk into the emergency room and the last thing my daughter said to me before her life changed was, Mommy, I love you. My head hurts. Alexis had a massive seizure and was airlifted to another hospital. I just felt like I basically was saying goodbye to my little girl. The third day we were there, the doctors came in and said, you kind of have some choices. We can either keep going or we can start weaning stuff off and basically let her pass. I was very angry at God. I went in the bathroom. I, I let it all out. That's when a new doctor came in and gave the Beckers some cause for hope. Nobody in the U.S. that they know of has done this treatment before and wanted to know if we wanted to try it. And that was my moment of, okay, this was my answered prayer. Alexis was slow to respond to the treatment until... They offered to sneak Chevy, their facility dog, up to see if she would respond to animals. And I just took her hand and I made her pet him. And we did that for about 10 or 15 minutes. And then I stopped petting him and she started moving her hand for the first time. It was just unbelievably emotional. We started bringing the dog more and more. Soon after, Alexis spoke. She said, mommy, daddy, dog, and kiss. And look, he's coming to you. That was a good boy. Now, four years later, Alexis continues to improve and is ready to work with the service dog of her very own in canine companion training in New Albany, Ohio. Throughout the two week long process, candidates work with several dogs. One of the really cool benefits of being here for team training is seeing other people get matched with their dogs as well. For Alexis, her strongest connection was with Clifford. She will run into the walls or furniture or whatever. And Clifford was the first dog I've seen her work with that anticipated her getting a little too close. Clifford, push. 
They had the opportunity to really solidify how they work together. We've seen this amazing development in Alexis. During graduation, the puppy raiser has the opportunity to hand the leash over to the individual that the dog's been matched. And while there are tears, it is always tears of joy and excitement and just ultimate pride. I feel like I've come full circle. My first dog went to a young lady. We got to watch her grow up. So this is exciting that he's going to be with another young girl and I'll get to watch her grow up with Clifford. When I look back at Alexis and her inability to even really pet the therapy dog Chevy initially to now looking at her walking around the room with him, holding a leash, having him sit, petting him, loving on him. It's just really miraculous. Oh, oh my God. My goodness. <laughs> Good so Lord. <laughs> Man, I'm glad I stuck around for that. Wow. That she's pretty is amazing. beyond touching. Right? That is unbelievable. That poor woman's story and that poor child, my yeah. God. But you can't even say that because not she's anymore. thriving yes, and she's doing wonderful and through the help of a dog. Yes. Isn't that beautiful? We're oh. the greatest movie ever. Yes. Just saying. Yes. In your now face. Everybody will go see Clifford. In your face, Dune. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys, that is not it because Keenan's co stars Darby Camp and Tony Hale had a special message for Alexis. Oh. Okay, Clifford and all their fellow graduates. Not only did Paramount, the, the studio behind Clifford the Big Red Dog, make a contribution to Canine Companions for Independence, they also gave everyone in Alexis and Clifford's graduating class free passes to the movies. Sweet. Mm. Very dogs sweet. included, y'all. And they can bring their dogs. Oh my God, That's Keenan. fantastic. Keenan. You're on the Thank side you. of the angel. I'm on the right side of things, apparently. <laughs> that is a beautiful thing. Shout out to Jordan Kerner. He's like the main producer that brought me onto the project. Oh. He did the Mighty Ducks back in the day, so he gave me my first job. In, oh. the, in the business and we've been, remained friends all over the years and he approached me about it and I was just like whatever you need you know but I, little did I know that it would be Doing you know good. the involvement of such a thing I was already a fan because you know John Ritter and Kel yeah. was yeah. on the yeah. show back in the yeah. day and yeah. also those books are so and they're iconic great. don't you did yeah. you grow up yes. reading those Clifford the Big yeah. Red I Dog I kind of did I was a little yeah. older but I still would you know pick them up just because it's a big giant red dog on the cover <laughs> And like, what is this about? So, <laughs> yeah. Keenan, thank you for hanging with us today. My pleasure. Thank All you right. for sharing that touching moment. Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. You open the door for so many people. I love working with people. I did not do any of this by myself. Hello! Lizzo, you put a smile on yes. every single face. It feels like Christmas and my birthday or something. <laughs> well, meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, did you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. NBC's Kerry Sanders has the story. He's in Lake Worth, Florida for us. Hi, Kerry. Good morning. Well, good morning, guys. These are not pets. These are service dogs, and they're trained specifically to work with vets who have PTSD and sense when those emotional problems kick in so that they can diffuse the situation before those emotions escalate. Palm Beach County, Florida is a long way from a battlefield, and while you can't see anyone's scars here, hey, hey, come. some of those who wore the uniform when our nation needed them most are still at war but it's in the memories that haunt them. An enemy IED explosion in Iraq to Sergeant Jack Lord retired sounded just like that dump truck tire that blew out. While I was driving, the back tire of the dump truck blew 
Like it wasn't just a flat, it was an explosion, like, you know, a, a, a tire blowing. And you heard? I heard it, I felt it. For a moment I was there. I mean, it, it, I swerved, I, it, it just, it was one of the scariest situations since coming back. And in your mind, were you back in Iraq at that moment? For a split second, yeah. Sazzy was a good girl. There you go. Since he got his therapy dog, Sazzy, Jack says triggers are muted. She's there to help me with anxiety. Uh, she's there to, to, to be my buddy. Not too different than you might say in the military watching your six, 100%. watching your back. I've never thought of it that way, but you're 100% right. I, I am never more comfortable than when I'm with my army buddies. I feel the same way with my dog. Semper Fi Service Dogs is a charity that rescues pooches from shelters. And then, after months and months of training with those in need, the rescued dogs become the rescuers. I consider like having a battle buddy. Ryan Onda, a veteran himself, trains and matches vets with dogs. What's it like when you see the dog make a connection with a vet? When I see the connection, it makes, it's like the, you know, I might not be rich, but it's, it's spiritually I'm rich because I know I just changed not only that veteran's life, but just like you drop a pedal in a pond, it changes everyone's life around that veteran. There. PTSD in part is why veterans are 60% more likely to separate or divorce than the average American. I have severe nightmares. It's been a challenge, but he's better. He's getting better. In just the last year, Emma joined the Kirk Mikowski family. If only Vinny and Linda, married 39 years, had known how a PTSD therapy dog could help. Vinny is a Vietnam vet. The memories of death and killing in the jungles still creeps in five decades later. Those things stick with you. and uh, It doesn't are, fade. It doesn't fade. They just keep reliving it. Drafted in 1968, fighting in Vietnam a year later. The kicking and punching and, and my nightmares. <laughs> what it all comes to you? out. And we have pillows between <laughs> us to make to protect her. He's fighting. He's fighting. He's trying to stay alive. He's physically fighting in the jungles. And his nightmares take him back there. Now, when he begins to thrash, Emma goes to work. I'm sleeping in bed and she's at my head. If so you start having night terrors? Nightmares, she'll wake me up. That's her job? That's her job. As we honor our vets this week, they ask for understanding. I've had some people when I walk around with Mattis that will just say, like, look at her, that fraud, because it doesn't look like I have any disabilities. So I would just hope people would, instead of judging right away, just take a second to ask someone, like, hey, cool dog, why do you have them? This morning in the Upside, a very special dog from the Furry Friends Rescue in South Florida. Lucy ended up being much more than a friend for her forever family. Take a look. Being dogless with grown children for a mother means that you have extra love and no place to put it. When Rebecca Claus's dog, Buddy, died in 2018, it left a void in their family. We would have pizza for dinner and I'd have extra crust and I'd look for him. The following year, Rebecca, her husband Steve, and their son Luke rescued a new furry companion, a puppy named Jack. I brought him home. He instantly sniffed everything, checked out the backyard, and made himself at home. He had 24-hour attention and fell in love as fast as we did with him. But when the pandemic forced millions to work from home, Rebecca noticed her pup was getting restless. It got to the point where his constant playing started to really uh, hinder my day and put me in a bad mood uh, because I wanted to give him all of the attention, but I also had to work. Rebecca returned to the animal rescue and saw that Jack's mother, Lucy, a feral dog, was still there. I saw that same beautiful coat and that same beautiful face with those eyes, and I knew there would be no question she had to come home with us. We brought her home that night and instantly started to look for a place to hide. And the furthest point from our front door is my son's bedroom and his door was open and that's where she ran. For weeks, Lucy stayed in that room, spending time with Rebecca's 19 year old son, Luke, who suffers from epilepsy. He was so, so grateful to have this dog hang out with him because Luke is a very calm uh, young man and so Lucy was perfect for him. 
And just two months after Lucy's arrival, she proved she was truly a lifesaver. So I, I, I literally opened my eyes, heard the baby monitor. We had slept through it. Lucy came to tell us that Luke was having a seizure and that he needed us. Two, three weeks later, it happened again. And this time, um, rather than us both going to Luke, I stayed with Lucy to thank her and to reward her and recognize her so that she knew that what she did was right and good and that we loved her for it. The two are now inseparable, showing that protective mother and son instincts know no bounds. Lucy is a is this miracle dog that comes out tail wagging when we get home. Luke loves Lucy and um, you know Lucy is the dog that um, that Luke probably always needed that I didn't even know. And we are so happy to report that Luke wow. is doing well and Rebecca tells us that Lucy is slowly but surely coming out of her shell. Such a great story. We'll That's be right amazing. Back. Maria Shriver, her daughter Catherine Schwarzenegger Pratt. Oh my God! I just gotta keep saying. It's a by the way, this is, there's a big there's a cause near and dear to your heart. Yeah. We're surrounded by puppies for for a reason. I mean, tell, there's yeah. no better way to start the morning than to be surrounded by puppies. Yeah, tell us about this. Personal opinion. So I, I do a lot of work with Best Friends Animal Society, and these yeah. puppies are all here today that are adoptable oh. dogs from Best Friends Animal Society. But we're doing an amazing event called Strut Your Mutt, um, which is you know on October 26. I'll be at the one in Los Angeles, and it's a day. Um, in about a dozen cities across the country, all dedicated to raising awareness and money for adoptable animals oh, and rescue cool. animals. Um, and it's something that's really, you know, a big passion project for me. I have my little dog, Maverick, that I rescued six or seven years ago. I wrote ago. a book. Yeah. 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 I did, Maverick and Me. Yeah. And um, so I've done a lot of work with Best Friends Animal Society, and this is like a big event for them. And if you can't be a part of the event, I'll be at the one in Los Angeles on October 26th. Um, but you can go online and donate, and you can donate to Best Friends Animal Society or local animal rescue shelters and did y'all always have dogs growing up yeah oh. but so not animals. but not adopted dogs yeah, yeah. We, well, we we started with an adopted pig yeah yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah about that pig <laughs> Bacon. Anyway, uh, we had a pig that I was beautiful. told would stay small. <laughs> we and were told it was going to be a didn't... little micro mini pot belly yeah, pig. Like, and it was a major. No, it was major. It was <laughs> huge. No, I did not. I did not love the pig that picked up the lawn. And no, I didn't love that situation. But these but dogs guys, are very lovable. Yeah, and you yeah. did. You guys grew up always with dogs, had dogs. Always. Yeah. Always have loved dogs, loved animals, being around animals. I think for kids, especially, is such like an incredible gift that you can give them. It teaches them about unconditional love, yes. responsibility yes. at a very young age, and yes. um, Maverick has been a huge gift in my life and has taught me so much and you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, so if you guys want more about Strut Your Mutt, <laughs> you can go to HodaAndJenna.com. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Welcome back to you today. We had a lot to celebrate on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody's good, and that's it! And what do you love about fatherhood? The chaos, the learning. Is climate change one of your top priorities? What's your message to girls who want to make a difference in their own communities? Believe in yourself. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? 
for breaking news in our changing world. Download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. I've played all over the world at some of the great venues, the Sydney Opera House, and Carnegie Hall. But all of that aside, my favorite audience to play for is right here at the ASPCA. As a professional violinist, I spend a lot of time on stage under bright lights and you know with sort of feeling like the world is watching here the world that's watching is you know my best friends <laughs> that are wagging their tails and will like it no matter what i do I think wanting to become a volunteer at the ASPCA uh, for me was rooted in my uh, desire to reconnect with animals. I've been an animal person all my life. I had a family dog uh, that I was very fond of and the loss of her many years ago was very difficult and I saw working at the ASPCA as a volunteer as a way to reconnect and to uh, get back in touch with the animals that I love so much. On my uh, application to become a, a volunteer, I sort of jokingly wrote, maybe I'll play the violin for dogs. I had no idea that there was a program that would even lend itself to that. With the Animal Recovery Center, um, we're treating animals that have been victimized either by direct physical trauma or long-term neglect that results in chronic medical conditions. And over time, as they're here, we are working to recover them, not only medically, but behaviorally. The volunteer support that Martin provides is part of a greater volunteer program called the Storytelling Program, in which volunteers come and read to our dogs. In this case, Martin is delivering music to our dogs. They're providing much needed socialization. This brings the dogs um, an opportunity to meet new people and learn that strangers bring good things. Here, I just feel like I can come and just make music and I know that no matter what comes out, really, that, that, that my audience is going to, in some way, benefit from, at least that's my hope. <laughs> it's an emotional experience. Uh, and it has been from day one. I can get attached very quickly to uh, some of these dogs I've played for, and then a week or two will pass and I'll come back and some of those dogs will not be here. I have to say to myself, well, I'm happy that the dog has gotten better and is ready to move on to the next chapter in their life. And maybe there will be music there as well. At just seven years old, Roman McCann has already helped rescue more than 1,900 wow. dogs. Isn't that incredible? Awesome. And if that's not awesome enough, it landed him the title of 2018's ASPCA's Kid of the Year. With the help of his mom, Roman began making videos helping to rescue animals all across the country. And this summer is going to be featured on Animal Planet's Dodo Heroes. Let's take a look. Dogs need a family where they will be loved and treated how they deserve. They need space to run around and have fun. I think dogs deserve more than life in a kennel. You ready? Mm hmm Go ahead, just start it. Hi everyone, this is my buddy Sniper here. He's almost two. Mm -hmm. Super sweet. Hi everyone, this is one of my new pals. She's got the big old Dumbo ears. Mm -hmm. And he's just waiting for his best home ever. We gotta find him a home. Oh, wow, Roman, that's really great. You're here went with his mom, Jen, and an adorable Hi, Jen. dog from the ASPCA named Lainey. Hi, Lainey. Roman, we love you. You want to know why? <laughs> you put your love for dogs to the test, and now you're saving dogs' lives. Mm. Does that feel pretty cool? It does. It feels amazingly cool that, I mean, from that I, that not many kids say, 
save dogs because right. they're either playing video games or watching TV. That's right. So what Wasting would you their say time to those kids that are watching right Put right Fortnite now. down and start saving some dogs. Yes. yes. Right, Roman? Why right. dogs? Why do you love dogs so much? Well, I love dogs because they let you have a friend to play with yes. and they are they give you company whenever you're lonely or sad. And so how did you decide to make these videos? Because it's such a smart idea. And, and could you believe it when they started taking off? I could not believe it when these videos were starting to take off. Because it was just like a rocket. <laughs> take it off. And Jen, what did you think when Roman started making these videos? Roman's definitely motivated me to be better as a human. Um, when he was four, he had recognized that they needed help where we were living at the time. And so um, it's been pretty crazy to watch him grow. He's almost eight, so he's been doing videos for about four years now. So um, it's amazing. What's Project amazing. Freedom Ride? Uh, we actually fund transports. Yeah, we fund transports for dogs in Texas and now in Augusta, Georgia, and we move them north so they can find homes and families and stuff. And um, so we've moved just shy of 2,000 dogs in a little under two years. By the way, um, this dog, Lainey, is uh, is a bowler. It's up for adoption. You can go to Hoda. Well, you know what you should do, Roman? Why don't yeah. you look at this camera right here and just pretend like you're making one of your videos. Yeah. What do you have I'm to say about get, Lainey to anybody it? watching? This is Lainey. She's eight years old. She is a American bulldog? No, nope, she's a bulldog. She's a bulldog, she's and she loves belly rubs, <laughs> and she likes the back of her ears scratch, yes. and a lovable dog, in fact, and she's hmm. super sweet. No, she is. Right. Well, Roman, you know what else is super sweet? You, and we wanted to honor you. We have this check for Project Freedom Ride for $10,000. That'd be enough for two transports. Oh, yes, that's right. <laughs> what do you say? Thank you so much. We have to tell you it's from New Trish, and also Aww. that's not it. We are inducting you into our kids in the spotlight wall of fame. Look at that, Roman. You're there. You deserve <laughs> it. All the hard work you've that's done. Awesome. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. This is so healthy. Doesn't it just weekend. feel good to be back to it school? Does. Yes. Start today. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. And what do you love about fatherhood? The chaos, the learning. Is climate change one of your top priorities? What's your message to girls who want to make a difference in their own communities? Believe in yourself. Remember Miracle, the dog found alive in the rubble nearly one month after Hurricane Dorian slammed the Bahamas? Well, this is a really good day for him. We waited for this day for a while. NBC's Carrie Sanders joins us from Florida with Miracle, where he is about to join his forever family. Hey, Carrie, good morning. Well, good morning. And look at Miracle, just so full of uh, energy, of course, still eating, gaining so much weight, it's going from 16 pounds to, well, now 34 pounds. So look at him, just so ready to go on to the next step in his life, which is leaving here at Big Dog Ranch Rescue and heading to join his new family. This is Miracle. 34.8. Hard to believe this dog has almost doubled his weight, learned to walk again, and is so full of life. When his story began on the doorstep of death. Found in the wake of Hurricane Dorian in the Bahamas, trapped under rubble, Miracle survived an incredible three and a half weeks. He's a fighter, he's a survivor, and he's a great symbol of hope for people that have lost everything. 
Lori Simmon, founder of Big Dog Ranch Rescue, coordinated the team that saved Miracle's life. He was extremely anemic and his muscles on his hind end had wasted away to nothing. It took a drone with heat seeking capabilities to find him buried beneath the debris. Good morning. We'll look skin and bones, but alive. You may remember when we first met Miracle here on Today, how weak and emaciated he looked. And then how he surprised us all. This is the first wow. time we've seen her stand up since. Look at that. Look at the strength. Oh, okay, wow. let's look. That was like watching a flower bloom. Like I'm literally know. watching it. That was awesome. That was so cool. Since then, Miracle's been fed special food and treated with doggy hemp oil to quell his anxiety over the sound of thunderstorms. Do you remember me? Do you remember me? Oh my God, how are you? 10,000 people sent in applications to adopt Miracle. It's a miracle that we got Miracle. <laughs> Today, one lucky family gets to take them home, Clark and Brianna Beatty, and their three daughters. They've had to keep the news a secret. He finally gets a boy. That's right. <laughs> and three little girls who are planning a big party for his arrival. Start of something good. Miracle, who was alone for three and a half weeks, now finding his forever home. We love you, Miracle! Thanks for doing this, Elizabeth. It's Good to see you. So nice to be seen and be in New York. I've not been to New York in two years. Oh, is that right? Yeah, it's since pre-pandemic. What's it like to be back? Uh, it's it feels great. It's got it is the city is brimming with energy, and I walked around last night, and I'm just yeah loving it. Well, we have a ton to talk about. Okay. I think we should start right here on the table. Oh. With Archer Roos. Archer Roos. Yes. Um, how did you get involved with this delicious treat? Archer Roos wine in a can. Um, good wine in a can, I should say. Yeah. So, female founder, I was really interested in putting my money where my mouth was. So, I, I hired a diverse female money manager, and we were looking for companies to get involved with that sort of reflected my values. I think that's something we're all trying to do right now is live a sort of a purpose-driven life, if we sure. can. And um, apparently, my purpose is wine in a can. <laughs> There definitely seems to be a thing in the last several years where well-known people are not just like backing financially or just putting their name on something, but um, getting super involved in the details of how the company runs and being a part of the marketing. And I think it's. I think it comes back to that uh, that word authenticity, right? Yeah. I think that when you just it's you can feel when you're just kind of selling something, right. and when it it's uh, that feels really important to me, and I think everybody sniffs it out now. <laughs> no, you're right. You're you right. know, um, you have to really care, I think, and that, that comes across when you're a little more involved. And when the, the marketing reflects me and who I am as a person, um, as well as the product. People are so savvy. I think you're right. When yeah. a celebrity says, I love this washing machine, you go, no, you don't. You do. No, you, you, you don't love the washing machine. I will machine. say, normally I do love the washing machine <laughs> okay. that I'm selling. <laughs> This I can tell you love. I um, do. You also have this new podcast, mm -hmm. which has a lot of people talking. My body, my podcast. Yes. It is. I was just saying to you, there's probably some joke in you and I sitting here, me, a middle-aged man, talking about women's bodies. But yeah. um, I have a 14-year-old daughter and a 12-year-old son, and as I started to listen to it, I said, "My God, these are the exact conversations we're either having or yeah. trying to have or dreading to have." Um, so what prompted you to open this discussion? You know, this exact thing prompted it, truly. I'm a mom and my kids are looking at puberty soon and I felt unprepared. Uh, I really felt also as a woman and as a feminist, somebody who was looking at Me Too and Time's Up over the last few years and coming to my own understanding about everything that's happened to me as a person, as a woman, in my industry especially, you know, how do I grapple with all of this? How do I talk to my kids openly about it? Um, because I want to raise really, I want to raise healthy kids who have great intimate relationships and are not f fearful or filled with shame about anything. Yeah. And we have a very old school way of dealing with sex and sexuality right now. And 
it's, it causes a lot of harm. And I just felt like if I can investigate these, this information for myself and, and learn more in the hopes of providing it for my own family, maybe other people want to listen in <laughs> and yeah. you know and i i really feel like i made it so that you could listen to it with your daughter or your son and so that parents could feel a little more prepared going forward but also because i truly believe that sex education when done well has the power to transform people's individual lives but also society as a whole mm. because everything that we talk about when we talk about body image sex sexuality health healthy relationships this is something that intersects our daily lives and we hide it away in a corner like it's shame filled and we're not allowed to talk about any of this stuff. One study said that human beings think about sex once per hour, your entire adult life. So from puberty till you're dying, you're always thinking about some aspect of something. It's constant. And it's not like I want to, you know, ooh, I want to have sex. It, it could be anything, you know, it could be like, ooh, you know, something on my body hurts or whatever. And it's also important to remember, like, we have these pleasure centers that we have access to on the daily, on the regular. And like, what an amazing feature of our human body. <laughs> you know? And why not use it a little bit more? And if we're going to use it, I want to make sure that the storytelling around it, that we own it. Because as a woman, I can tell you that a lot of the storytelling about my body and how it's used and how I have had my sexual experiences, it, it, I don't own it. I don't own that storytelling. Mm. And that's, that's upsetting as you get older and you realize how many experiences, especially young women are having, where they're not really having any fun. I think young women are taking it back there's so much more information out there. This podcast is part of that information. But at the end of the day, we have deep-seated and very deep-rooted um, shame around these and stigma around these issues and talking about them openly. And the way we do it with young people, too, even just how we separate boys and girls in health class. That's not really doing anybody any favors. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you're, what you're doing is you're creating a system in which boys are told about erections and nocturnal emissions and you know, the, a lot of fun things mm -hmm. I was and in girls are told you're gonna have your period it's gonna be horrible you're gonna bleed <laughs> don't get pregnant be afraid don't get an std right. don't get raped it's like that it's like the messaging is a mess and then we put them back together and we go what did you talk about i don't know i'm not supposed, I, apparently i'm not supposed to tell you what i talked about right don't you think part of the process though is people like you kicking that door open of course who you know whether my daughter loves you and pitch perfect and oh okay she's saying it's okay to say these things out loud yeah i think that's a part of the the journey i hope so you know i I grew up, I had some Dr. Ruth, and then we had like Loveline, remember yeah, that? And yeah. the day of Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew. And, um, I, and I read Cosmo. And you know, what I'm realizing now is kids are getting their information from algorithms. And they're online and they're looking up, I want a healthy recipe. And they're soon, pretty soon directed to like eating disorder websites yeah. or being told that they're not good enough. Well, you know, in, in every aspect of social media is amplifying the negativity that happens online. You're right. I mean, like so much that's online, it's the job of the parent or whoever to intervene and that's correct right. that early or else yeah. that, that becomes, you know, cemented as the image. You've talked about body image, which is, so, again, I keep going back to the father of a teenage yeah, girl. Of course. With Instagram and everything else, it's a tough world out there when you're told relentlessly with every scroll this is what you should look like your teeth should be this way yep. your abs should look like this um, what do you say to both parents and young people growing up in a world where they more than ever in some ways are shown what they're supposed to look like I have a real love-hate relationship with social media uh, for myself and I have a hate relationship with it for my children so my kids are not on my Instagram they have very limited screen time and any of that stuff very limited gaming, the whole thing. I just feel like that is my number one job as a parent is to protect them yes. from those things. You know, I'm not their friend. I'm literally meant to guide them through life and figure out what's in their best interest and what isn't. And I think the evidence becomes clearer and clearer every day that social media especially, but the internet generally 
is not in their best interest in any way. I mean, it's great for information. It's great for buying things. It's great for connecting with your grandma. So I, I love those aspects of it, and I think we should celebrate those aspects of it. But there's a lot that is no good for kids, and I really feel as a parent, for me, that um, part of my job is policing all of that. But it's really hard. I have, I, it's easier said than done. Yeah, no, we're, I'm sort of on the same page in terms of the way we handle it um, with social media. In some ways, though, the genie is so far out of the bottle, yeah. it's like you can't hide them from everything, and they just see it. I mean, whether it, maybe it's not on Instagram, but maybe it's on a commercial on the show, they, whatever yeah. it is of who I'm supposed to be, it's very in their face. Yeah. I think making sure that you're their trusted adult. So on the podcast, we talk a yeah. lot about trusted adults in their lives. And a trusted adult does not necessarily have to be you. Like, I had a lot of, you know funky aunts, you know, <laughs> who, were, who my mom, I think, could farm out some of the right. information to because it's a little less awkward when you get to talk to your aunt about it versus your mom or whatever. Um, but having trusted adults in your kids' lives is really important. So if, it's, if it is you, great. But if it's not you, make sure there's somebody in their life that they can talk to about these things. NBC News, streaming free now. You open the door for so many people. I love working with people. I did not do any of this by myself. Hello! Lizzo, you put a smile on yes. every single face. It feel like Christmas and my birthday or something. <laughs> News is happening now. A look at what's making headlines around the world. We're coming on the air with breaking news. This is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. You open the door for so many people. I love working with people. I did not do any of this by myself. Hello! Lizzo, you put a smile on yes. every single face. It feel like Christmas and my birthday or something. <laughs> News is happening now. A look at what's making headlines around the world. We're coming on the air with breaking news. This is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. This is so healthy. Doesn't it just weekend. feel good to be back to it school? Does. Yes. Start today. And what do you love about fatherhood? The chaos, the learning. Is climate change one of your top priorities? What's your message to girls who want to make a difference in their own communities? Believe in yourself. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. News is happening now. Are you ready? Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. And what do you love about fatherhood? The chaos, the learning. Is climate change one of your top priorities? What's your message to girls who want to make a difference in their own communities? Believe in yourself. It's a testament to your relationship with your mom that she's on the podcast. Yeah. That you have these open conversations. <laughs> what did she think when you told her what this podcast she was? She was not that surprised. <laughs> <laughs> she was not that surprised. She's been my trusted adult for a very long time. You know, I wouldn't say everything was like an open discussion with my mom, but I'm very grateful and lucky. I had loving, I had a loving boyfriend in high school. Um, I have a great relationship. Obviously, I'm t almost 30 years into my relationship with my husband, who I've been married to for 18 you years. You met him the first day of college. I met him on my first day. I was 18 years old when I met him, and we're still together. But that requires like a lot of curiosity to keep it interesting for 30 years, you know, and and, and open discussions about everything as well. And I'm talking to my mom on the podcast really helped for me hone in on that theme of a trusted adult. And the idea that these are not conversations that happen once or twice, but that it's an ongoing conversation for your entire life, hopefully. Yeah. You mentioned your mom. Yeah. I'm just curious about going back to your upbringing uh -huh. in Pittsfield, Mass. 
at what point your mother or your family realized that you might be a performer, that you might be an actor? Very late. Late, really? <laughs> yeah, no, I was not meant. My mother bought me a book. She bought me Diane Sawyer's autobiography or biography uh, when I was in college because I thought I might be a broadcast journalist like Willie Guys. I thought I would, you know, that seemed like a, the right path for me. I loved Diane Sawyer. It wasn't until of truly like my senior year of really? university. I've been yeah. doing plays my, you know, since middle school. Right. Um, my very first musical was Jesus Christ Superstar. I had broken my leg. I was an athlete. I broke my leg. I couldn't play sports. I was in a walking cast. And I always sang in the choir. And the singing teacher said, we're going to do Jesus Christ Superstar. Uh, you can play Pontius Pilate. <laughs> <laughs> Not Mary Magdalene, by the way. You can play Pontius Pilate because you can wear long robes over your walking cast oh, wow. and sing the song. And I can still remember, I can still sing the song. And uh, that was my first foray into real performing was in middle school because I had to. I needed something. I was a latchkey kid. I needed something to do after school. My parents, you know, were like, you got to be busy, stay right, busy. Right. And I suddenly didn't have sports. I didn't have practice. So I went to rehearsal instead, and that became my sort of my new family. And I carried that through college, and, and um, but I never thought, I didn't understand this as a profession. I didn't know anybody who was an artist professionally. Uh, I knew, you know, my cousin dabbled in it a little bit, but, you know, you, they were mostly all waiters, you know what I mean? Yeah. I had been a waitress at that point for 10 years, going on 10 years, and so, um, I thought, how do you make this into a life? And um, I got into drama school. And I went to drama school, which I could not afford. And I took on more student loans. And I just thought, oh, man. And then I kind of came out. And I said, I'm going to give myself a little bit of time. But this, it, it never felt real to me until it suddenly was. Right. And so I just kept putting the work in. And so then what was that moment where you said, oh, I can do this for a living. This can be a life. Um, I'm out here. I am waiting yeah. on tables. I've had some brutal auditions. I've had producers say some awful things to me. Yeah. Um, um, when did you decide, yeah, this is something I can do or I want to do? When I was leaving drama school, I came to New York. I had a, a, a showcase, as, as they say, in the business uh, <laughs> where you sort of put on a little show for agents and managers and different people. And a casting director was there from a soap opera here. And um, I they invited me the next day to audition for this soap. I, I, I'd never done a professional audition. I didn't really know what that was. And I got the job. And I, they offered me a two-year contract on a soap opera. And I called my mom from a payphone. I'm dating myself. <laughs> I called my mom from a payphone. And I said, I don't think I'm going to do it. And it, was, it would have paid all my student loans. So this was very serious. like more money than I'd ever dreamed of having. And it wasn't even that much money. But, you know, it was like... Holy God, yeah. um, this solves all my financial woes, you know? And my mom agreed. I was crying on the phone. I was like, I just don't think I want to do it. I don't know what else is out there. And that was the advice. I was like, well, if you can get this today, what can you get tomorrow? Wow. And um, that's how I've approached this whole life. What, what have I gotten today? Okay, great. Well, what else can I get tomorrow? And don't settle for what you got today. Figure out what else you can get. <laughs> and it's led me down this incredible path where I feel like I've been able to keep a little bit of my dignity intact, although not all of it. You shed a lot as an actress in Hollywood. <laughs> it falls done, off and done. you just pick it back up and try and <laughs> stick it back on. Um, so I've maintained most of my dignity. But also I've realized that like it all adds up to something. Every, I, you know, you used to go to auditions and be like, man, if I don't get this audition, I can't pay my rent. Hmm. And you, I put so much pressure on that two minutes in a room with people who you don't know and don't know, who don't care about you paying your rent and are just trying to solve their problem, which is they need somebody to come in and be great so they can cast them in this role. And at a certain point, I allowed myself to let go of that pressure and just be like, you know what, I'm going to go in there, I'm going to do the best I can, I'm going to walk away, and if they call me, great. And if I never hear from them again, I'm going to keep on keeping on because it's already in the past. Hmm. And it really freed me to just keep going forward and not be precious about what I can't change because it already freaking happened. Where did the confidence come from to say no to this big gig that was going to pay all your I bills and it was on a show people <laughs> knew and you were like, 
no. Unconditional love, I guess, you know? I yeah. mean, truly, I think that is where it comes from. It comes from going to college. My, neither of my parents, they have, uh, my mom has now gotten her college degree, but when I was going to university, they, neither of my parents had graduated from college. They didn't have college degrees. So going to school as a first gen was already like their wildest dreams come true. And I knew that from my parents and I knew that my parents would do everything to make my life better and give me my dreams. And they do it for my sisters and my brother as well. And they're super just loving and supportive. So I think just knowing that like my fallback is like some loving family that will help me. <laughs> it's like, Really nice to have, and not everybody has that. Yep. So it's important to recognize that that is privilege that I grew up with, um, that I now give to my kids as well and to the rest of my family. But that chance that I had, I was not gonna waste because I knew it was special and that it meant something to more than just me. I also feel like you became sort of undeniable. You were relentless of like, Wet Hot American <laughs> Summer was good, Scrubs was great, 30 Rock, you were great, yeah. Modern Family. And people finally were like, okay, she's great. You, Did that feel like a grind through that? Um, it does. There, is a mo there are moments when you, when you realize that um, people trust you as an entertainer. I think that's really important. Knowing like, okay, if I'm on, you can relax. Like, I'm going to entertain you. I'll make you laugh. I'll sell the joke to you, you know. <laughs> Are you going to watch me on Press Your Luck? Like, I love Press Your Luck. Like, Great. I'm going to bring you along for a ride. And I think as an entertainer, that's really, that's an important thing for me, is be, making sure that the audience trusts me and connects to me and feels like I'm not going to disappoint you. That's, I take that responsibility very seriously. And, um, there, there have been moments where I was like, you know, it's going to be fine. <laughs> I also, I didn't need a lot. My bar was low. Right. I really was like, I learned, I got like my class three driver license. I drove like a, a van in college. And so I got like the special license. And I literally, I'm not kidding you, Willie. I used to tell myself, well, I can always drive a bus. <laughs> Truly. I'll be fine. I can drive a bus. Just renew that license. <laughs> Just renew the license <laughs> and pass the <laughs> test again. You know, I really have come to life with the, what's the worst case scenario? Yeah. And uh, it takes a lot of hustle to build that confidence. But I've never shied away from doing the dirty work um, and whatever it takes. News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. And what do you love about fatherhood? The chaos, the learning. Is climate change one of your top priorities? What's your message to girls who want to make a difference in their own communities? Believe in yourself. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now.
Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. At some point, you make this conscious decision of maybe I'm not getting the big roles that I think I should be getting. <laughs> I like it. You're like you're not an A-list star. Well, this no, is true. no, I tell, <laughs> com, no, no. I'm, I'm a I'm a worker. I'm no, a worker I'm going bee. back now, and you take control of your destiny. Yes, you start I your own production company. Yes, with your now husband. Yes, and you say, okay, we're just going to make the stuff. I got really great advice from um, some incredible women in the business who are a little a little ahead of me, you know, maybe a little generation ahead of me, and who who um, were really dissatisfied and and bored. They were really bored. Mm. And I could already feel a sense of boredom creeping in. And um, I knew that if I didn't do something, I would it would fester. I would feel underused. I would feel like I wasn't bringing my full self to my work and I wasn't accomplishing everything that I wanted to do. And um, so being able to be a little more in control of storytelling and directing and producing, creating interesting stories that center women's lives and women's autonomy, that became just a, a goal and a destiny for me that felt totally right and again authentic to who I am as a person, as a woman, as a feminist, as an activist. And here we are. Yeah, I just started doing it. A lot of people ask me, but how? You know, there are actually, there are a bunch of um, actresses who are doing it right now. Olivia Wilde comes to mind. Natalie Morales is coming up. Um, you know, but Jodie Foster did it before me. Penny Marshall did it before me. Um, those were my role models. Uh, and, but it's rare. Yeah. It's a rare thing to do. So it takes a lot of chutzpah. Um, and I just thought, well, if I don't try, I'll regret not trying. And I know I'll be bored. Hmm. Otherwise, you have to wait for the phone to ring. Right. And I don't want someone else to be in control of my time and what I do with it. I feel, for me, the d definition of success is control over how I spend my time. Because now I have kids and I, I want to make sure when I'm away from them that I'm doing things that really matter to me. I have to underline the name of the company too, Brownstone, Brownstone because yeah. it tells the story of the way you grew up, right? It does, yeah. So I grew up on Brown Street in Pittsville, Massachusetts, and my best friend, Soraya, and I used to joke about our lives someday, and we used to think about having a five-digit address because that was the fancy side of town. They had, it was like 10 300 <laughs> Brownstone Drive. You know, nobody lived on Brown Street. like. Right. It's a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I love the hometown roots, um, but it, it, it was aspirational for me, the idea of Brownstone Drive someday. And living in a brownstone in New York City was very aspirational for me. And I lived in one when I, before, with my husband before we started the company. And so Brownstone for me, it was, just, uh, it was always a meaningful idea in mm. my life um, growing up in, in you know, little my little town in Massachusetts. And then with one of your first projects, you come out pretty hot with Pitch Perfect. <laughs> I mean. We are mainly known for the Pitch Perfect franchise. Figuring out how to tell a story about a group of misfits and, and, and that it was those women. I loved those women. I loved, you know, Kay Cannon who wrote the script, um, did an incredible job creating just a group of women that I think everybody could see themselves in. And at the end of the day, like a really basic, you know, boys versus girls storyline that stands the test of time. And people love singing and dancing. Yeah, just a fun universe <laughs> to be in too. Just singing and dancing. Singing and dancing. And yeah. I think bringing um, a, a lot of humor to that, bringing a, a, an irreverent sense of comedy to it, which is something that, you know, have, has been a through line of my career, my whole career um, in comedy. And it's really fun to put, a, put out a poster in the world that features all those women. Yeah. You don't see a lot of those posters. And I think it feels very natural, but go through all the Hollywood posters. It's not. It really, it's, it's very quietly revolutionary in my opinion. Talk about controlling your own destiny, then you step into directing. Yeah. What do you love about directing? I assume you do love it. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you're like, no, never again. I just did it again. I know. I know you did. I want to ask you about that too. Oh, but God. Is, I mean, it's, 
especially a, a movie of the scope of a Pitch Perfect movie. That's a big, that's yeah. a big directing project. What do you love about that? I love the collaboration with the crew and the cast. I like being in charge. I'm not afraid of being in charge, and I like, um, you know, I like leading that group, and I love offering opportunity to people. I mean, I really feel a great responsibility. I tell everybody at the end of any, you know, the part of the process, like I'm going to keep working hard to like make this something that everyone's proud of, and that is my goal, just to make something that everybody's proud of, it, and to entertain people. You know, it's it's. I I've been thinking. Not a lot, but a little bit as I'm aging about what my legacy is in the world. You know, not everybody gets the opportunity to leave a real legacy. And what I didn't want was for everyone to look at What Had American Summer and 30 Rock and whatever and just be like, yeah, she was, she was cute. She was good on those. She was, she was a good actress or whatever. You know, cute blonde, small boobs, nice actress. <laughs> like, I was like, is that my legacy? Is that it? You know, how, how do I take a little more control over what is going on. And also, I'm just curious. I really love trying new things. And I love when people put me in a box, immediately blowing the box open, you know? So I, I made this, you know, funny musical and I was like, what else can I do? Thank you so much. Congratulations on all your success. Thanks. The wine is delicious. The podcast is great. Thank you. It's all happening. Nice to see you. Cheers. Cheers. A big hello and thanks for joining us for a special edition of Pop Star Plus. I'm Joe Fryer filling in for Carson. Today on the show, we're taking a moment to indulge in the past and revisit our favorite nostalgic summer movies. We're going to take a look at why we feel the way we do when we watch those older summer flicks. And you're killing me, Smalls. Today, contributor Donna Farrison spoke to the cast of a movie that defines the season, The Sandlot. We found out why it still resonates today. And to close out our special show, we've got our friend Chris Witherspoon, founder and CEO of Pop Viewers. He's counting down the most nostalgic summer movie scenes of all time. Stay with us for all of that. It'll be great. To kick things off, here's a deep dive into how watching nostalgic films makes us feel, especially during the heat of summer. Summer in itself is a great example of a trigger for nostalgia because it connotes many of the attributes that accompany nostalgia, such as longing for the carefreeness, the leisure uh, of childhood. But when you watch something like a movie that's set at summer camp, you've got so many stimuli there that are reminding us that in our hectic, busy lives, should we not occasionally take a break? So, uh, either of you by any chance know how to play poker? Yeah, never played it before. Roosevelt, how's that lanyard coming? Horrible. Film is a really good example of a medium that has all of the triggers for different kinds of sensory experiences, visual, auditory, such as the music in a film. And so you have all these varieties of sensory stimuli that help you to mentally transport yourself in two ways, by the way. Uh, one, when you're just remembering the past, you're transporting yourself back to that time. An interesting finding recently showed that when people just reminisce nostalgically, they even feel a little more uh, healthy and vibrant and they have more vitality. Why? Because when you transport yourself back, you're feeling a little bit of the feelings you felt when you were younger. Nostalgic films, especially for uh, looking back to your beloved favorite uh, childhood movies, those were a source of great comfort. Shut up! You're killing me, Smalls. Dear Darla, I hate your stinking guts. <laughs> Their time, up there. Down here, it's our time. It's our time down here. In fact, in film, for example, we believe from the research data that there are characters in movies that serve as surrogates for us. 
So when you watch a film that you loved in the past, not only are you remembering when you watched it, with whom did you watch it, the, the uh, conversations you had at the time, maybe you went out to the movies with friends or what have you. But in addition to that, as you watch characters in films play out their own problems and resolve them through this vicarious resolution, you feel that hope and optimism which is a lot like the happy ending of many stories that we've seen throughout our lives, right? If you wanted to uh, log them according to seasons of the year, for instance, summer is a great time. And uh, what operates as a nostalgic film, it could be something like Star Wars, uh, episode one, for a generation who saw that for the first time, either as children, teenagers, or young adults, and to some extent, it's transporting them, not just to the film and the enjoyment of the film, but also uh, it gives someone the ability to reflect upon what did it mean to me when I saw that as a kid and now what, did, what would I think of it now? So sometimes when we rewatch an old film, we're comparing our understanding as full-fledged adults or our understanding now, now that we've lived through so much with what we thought when we first saw it. Also for the elderly today, they might think back to the great summer films that were beach movies. You know, the parties on the beach and playing volleyball on the beach. When you think about transportation uh, mentally through a film, now you have added on to it that you might transport yourself to somebody else's past or to somebody else's experience, not necessarily your own. So uh, fiction can be enjoyed and benefited from even in terms of nostalgia for instance a lot of nostalgic films incorporate within the plot or within the character uh, lines characters remembering back to their past i can still recall our last summer i still see it all walks along the seine laughing in the rain I was the last one to move away, but when I did, the Sandlot was still there. And then when you watch that, then that prompts you to sort of mentally transport yourself with that character back to their past as well. So it's very rich. Film is a very rich medium. Our thanks to Professor Christine Batchel for sharing all of her findings and insights with us, a little better understanding of why those films make us feel so good. Still to come, even more nostalgia and more fun. Donna Farrison's chat with the Sandlot stars who played Yeah Yeah and Squints. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, top story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. NBC News. Streaming free now. NBC News, streaming free now. Welcome back to our Pop Star Plus special all about nostalgic summer movies. Now, if you're a 90s kid, you'll remember the 1993 release of a movie about a ragtag pack who loved playing ball. 
and it changed how we think about summer forever. Today, contributor Donna Farrison spoke to two of the stars from The Sandlot, Chauncey Leopardi, who played Squints, and Marty York, who played Yeah Yeah. They shared the responses they still get about the movie set during a summer back in 1962. Was the summer you filmed The Sandlot the best summer of your lives? It was for sure the best summer <laughs> of my life. Yeah, yeah. I don't think anything, you know, compares to it since then. And uh, I think we just had had a blast. It was summer camp for like two or three months that we filmed over the summer. And definitely, definitely the best summer. Yeah, it was pretty great. It's hard to beat. Um, obviously, you know, I love my family and I wouldn't want my wife to think that, uh, you know, my 11 year old summer was the best summer of my life, but uh, it, it, it was pretty awesome, you know, hanging out with friends and having that experience and then getting to share it with uh, the rest of the world forever. It's just a, it's a pretty, a pretty amazing thing. This film represents the best of summer, the 4th of July celebrations, the carnival, kids playing ball, the s'mores, you name it. There's so many different elements. Why do you think The Sandlot is a film that has defined summertime for a lot of people? It takes people back to, a, to an era of the United States that where kids went outside and they played and when the sun went down, that's when they came, went home. I want you to get out into the fresh air and make some friends. Run around, scrape your knees, get dirty. You had adventures during the day. It'll be 30 years next year, first of all. How does that feel for you guys? It's amazing, I mean, you know, Anytime you do a film, you never know what the results are gonna be. But to still be here talking about this 30 years later and to uh, to see it still affecting people's lives for the better is kind of, that's kind of why you're in the arts. You know, it's the, the reason that you wanna do, that's what you set out when you, you have passion about a project is to hope that you get one that, that you know, changes things, you know, forevermore. So mm -hmm. it, it's a blessing. And we, uh, we appreciate all the love and support that we've gotten over the years. What were your favorite scenes to film for each of your characters? I loved like all of the baseball stuff, obviously it was a lot of fun. When we played the other team, it was a blast. Filming the whole chase scene, we did that for like two weeks. So just the dog chasing Benny and all the different stuff. That was a lot of fun as well. I think that there's like something to find that was cool about everything. And uh, even in the treehouse stuff, that treehouse was amazing. This is when they really built sets for film still. There was no green screens or or you know or anything like that so that was all like real craftsmanship somebody a carpenter the the uh the construction guys on set actually built those sets so they were so cool and like so in depth uh mr myrtle's house and it was a really cool time in filmmaking because you still had all of the crafts really showing you know showcasing their work whereas now maybe things are a little bit more relying on on computer generated software and, and stuff like that so it was a cool time to to kind of see them you know, fabricate this uh, this really cool film and uh, these really cool sets. Obviously, my my favorite scene was going over the fence to come face to face with the beast and uh, being on that crane. And it's really cool because you know back then, you know, kids could do their own stunts, which would never happen nowadays. And just like a lot of the stuff that I didn't even see till the final picture came out, the Fourth of July scene, you know. We filmed that with just literally lights and gels that they put in front to make it look like fireworks were going off. You know, when we filmed that, it didn't seem that iconic to me until you put Ray Charles to it, until you put the, the fireworks in the sky. And uh, you, when we saw the final product, we were like, wow, like that really like, you know, that's an amazing scene. That was just movie magic. God done shed his grace on thee. What kind of memories do people you know, tell you that they have that are related to the Sandlot. What do the fans come up to you and say? Everybody that relates to Squints that has the glasses or like, you know, I get a lot of the pictures and the photos. Sometimes as growing up, having glasses is always like a, you know, something that people could be a little reserved about or, or feel like they get picked on a little bit. So it's cool to have that that cool character that people can relate to that, that makes them feel um, like this is a, a superpower, not, not not the opposite. How do you think the Sandlot has helped empower young people to 
feel more included, be more inclusive, and, you know, feel okay to embrace their differences. It's awesome because this is a bunch of uh, kids of all shapes, colors, and sizes. They're all different. They all have their own little, their little thing. And, you know, the main character is a kid that's filling out a place and coming from somewhere else and really not fitting in. And it starts off with, like, his struggle of, like, you know, trying to connect with his stepfather and trying to connect with these kids in this but new neighborhood. And uh, it, it takes a guy like Benny, who is up. obviously I mean, a, a very strong character and an amazing baseball player and uh, a total star to just say, you know, leave him alone. We need an extra guy and this guy's, this guy's gonna be it, you know? So it's about including people regardless of, you know, what the, the masses feel. So I think it has a lot to say about, you know, real American values, because that's what America is. It's a melting pot of different cultures and different people that, that you know, find common ground to create a better life for themselves. Really cool to hear from those two. We're gonna share more from them after the break, including what it was like to film that famous pool scene featuring Squints and Wendy Peppercorn. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. These are our missing daughters and sons. We need anyone who saw something to come forward. She was wearing a black jacket, a black top. I'm going to bring my son home alive. Dateline, missing in America. Listen to the full season now. What do you love about fatherhood? The chaos, the learning. Is climate change one of your top priorities? What's your message to girls who want to make a difference in their own communities? Believe in yourself. We will meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? Welcome to today. We are going to start with some good news. Wake up each other now. Doesn't oh, it weekend. just feel good to be back to it school? Does. Yes. This is so healthy. Here's what's happening in your The crowd is ready. SG, you ready? Refresh and reorganize for fall. Start today. These are our missing daughters and sons. We need anyone who saw something to come forward. She was wearing a black jacket, a black top. I'm going to bring my son home alive. Dateline, missing in America. Listen to the full season now. You open the door for so many people. I love working with people. I did not do any of this by myself. Hello. Lizzo, you put a smile on yes. every single face. It feel like Christmas and my birthday or something. <laughs> Welcome back to our special episode of Pop Star Plus. Let's pick back up with Donna Farrison's conversation with two stars from The Sandlot, Marty York and Chauncey Leopardi, who spoke about that very pivotal pool scene and the impact it's had on young kids today. Chauncey, you were talking about, you know, Wendy Peppercorn and that pool scene, which is so iconic when your character almost drowns and then gets saved by the lifeguard that everyone has a crush on. What do you remember from shooting that scene? God, it looks like a dead fish. Uh, it was really cold. Mm -hmm. it, was, uh, it was a really hot summer, but uh, during the time that we shot the pool scene, it had dipped down into like the 70s and we were shooting early mornings for the light and uh, it was freezing cold. So in a lot of those scenes, you can see us like, shivering in the pool or I know it was like a big anticipation for me leading up to that I kept asking the director you know is today the day is today the day <laughs> you know what I mean it was my first my first kissing scene so you know wow pretty exciting that is exciting that's amazing yeah. just as we talked about earlier too so much that has happened or the emotions that are evoked from the sandlot translate into real life as well. On the Today Show, Hoda recently interviewed the three boys who had saved the dad who became unconscious underwater in their pool. It's an amazing story. They performed CPR on him, saved his life, and they credited learning CPR through watching The Sandlot and through that specific 
seen. Now, who took a CPR class? Raise your hand. Nobody? But you did know, because what was one of your favorite movies? The Sandlot. What was your reaction to that news? That's just incredible, you know? Like, here we are 30 years later, and, and something that someone saw that we did 30 years ago saved their father's life. I mean, it, it just, it, it makes you want to tear up because it's such a beautiful thing. And, uh, you know, wherever we get the information from, it, it's great, you know? So to be the, the, the force that helped them do that for their father, you know, I, I'll never forget it. Every time I come across a fan of the Sandlot, they always talk about it in a way that, you know, they feel so com comforted and cozy when watching it. It brings them back to a different time. Why do you think people feel so comforted when watching The Sandlot? It's timeless. The way David Mickey Evans, the writer and director, shot it, he told the DP, Tony Richmond, he told him, I want it to look like Kodak chromatic film. So that's like an old, uh, you know, very pop arty type of film from the from the 60s. And he said, I want it to look like that. And I think because of the setting, how do you have done it in the 90s when we shot it and, and placed it present day? I don't think it would have lasted and stood the test of time. It's like a Bel Air. It's like a, a 57 Chevy, you know, it's something that the lines on it are going to be clean forever. And no matter what, you're always going to get a nostalgic feeling when you go see these these old cars at these car shows and just the storied time in American history. And be, and because it's it's just frozen in time, I think that it, it, it stands the test of time because it is a time capsule, like Marty said. It just, it takes you to a happy place where, you know, good or bad, we felt like everything was, was a little bit simpler. Thank you to Marty and Chauncey for hanging out with us. Still to come, we've queued up some of the most nostalgic summer movie scenes of all time. Do we got any Parent Trap fans out there? Stick with us. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. We are going to start with some good news. We've got each other now. Doesn't it weekend. just feel good to be back to it school? Does. Yes. This is so healthy. Here's what's happening in your the crowd is ready, SG, you ready? Refresh and reorganize for fall. Start today. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to our special episode of Pop Start Plus. We are diving into everything you need to know about nostalgic summer movies. And who better to guide us along than Chris Witherspoon? He is the founder and CEO of Pop Viewers, and he's about to take us on a lovely trip down memory lane with some of the most nostalgic summer movie scenes ever. Is there anything that beats the warm weather, the long sun-filled days and fun that comes with summertime? Whether you went to camp or hung out by the pool, spent time with family and friends, or had seven jobs like me, summer was always filled with terrific memories of growing up. Unfortunately, we'll never be kids again, but luckily, we'll always have movies to turn to that transport us back to those days, no matter what decade you grew up in. Let's count down as we watch some of the best nostalgic summer movie scenes of all time. First up, Weekend at Bernie's. It's an absolute classic. Now grab your sunblock and flip flops because you'll be wanting to enjoy a weekend at the beach after watching this one. In it, Jonathan Silverman and Andrew McCarthy play friends who are invited for a weekend at their boss's opulent beach house. Lots of shenanigans ensue that ultimately lead to their boss, Bernie's, death. But to avoid ruining their weekend, Richard and Larry pretend he's still alive. Let's take a look at the clip. You're probably right. Get it together, Bernie. Oh, Bernie. 
Here we go, shoot, move it over a little bit, okay, baby? I don't understand why we have to move him, Red. Oh, don't ask me any questions, Lair. Just move him. Oh. Here we go. Ready? I can't believe I'm touching a dead body. Here's your boss. Come on. Let's go. Whoa. Oh, bird. Come on. That's what you call some dead weight. Come on, let's go. Come on, he's crazy. Here we go. Wait, is there an award for playing the best dead guy? If so, Terry Kaiser deserves it. If you're looking to laugh like there's no tomorrow, add this film to your summer watch list. Next up, one of almost everyone's favorites, The Notebook. Ryan Gosling and Rachel McAdams killed these roles as lovers who were always meant to be together. Who could forget the moment when Noah and Ali reunited after seven years apart? Did he just pick that boat up with his bare hands? I think he did. It wasn't over for me. I waited for you for seven years. Now it's too late. I wrote you 365 letters. I wrote you every day for a year. You wrote me? Yes. It wasn't over. It still isn't over. Oh, that's a kiss right there. Ooh, talk about a hot girl summer. Even all that rain couldn't cool those two down. On to another fun one, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Now, if you watch this as a teen, then you got tons of ideas on how to spend the perfect day playing hooky. Matthew Broadwick stars, of course, as Ferris Bueller, and the movie starts a month before Ferris's high school graduation. Ferris ends up at a museum, a baseball game, a fancy restaurant, you name it. One of the most hilarious moments was when his teacher realizes he's missing from class. Let's watch this clip. Anderson. Here. Bueller. Bueller. Bueller? Um, he's sick. My best friend's sister's boyfriend's brother's girlfriend heard from this guy who knows this kid is going with the girl who saw Ferris pass out at 31 Flavors last night. Now she can That's lie. That's pretty serious. That's a good lie. Thank you, Simone. No problem whatsoever. Fry. <laughs> oh my god, Ben Stein's boring monotone delivery gets me every time. And P.S. Find yourself a co-worker that will be your alias next time you want to dish work on a summer Friday. Everybody needs one of those. Now Clueless is one of those timeless movies following a group of popular high school friends. If you didn't know, it's a modernization of Jane Austen's Emma and it's got an amazing cast. Alicia Silverstone and Paul Rudd and of course the late great Brittany Murphy. Just to name a few. Check out this scene where Cher, played by Silverstone, makes the case for not participating in PE class. Earth to Cher! Come in, Cher! Oh my oh. God. Ms. Stoger, I would just like to say that physical education in this school is a disgrace. I mean, standing yes, in gym line outfits. for 40 minutes is hardly Different aerobically outfits. effective. I doubt I've worked off the calories in a stick of carefree gum. Come on, Cher. I feel like in this scene, Cher could have just said, uh, oh, as if, and been done with it. Clueless does take place throughout all four seasons, but real talk, those Beverly Hills vibes will have you feeling like you're on vacation. Another fun summer love story with lots of dancing. You guessed it, dirty dancing. Jennifer Grey and Patrick Swayze play Baby and Johnny, and the two fall in love after being paired as dance partners. Now, one of the most iconic movie lines ever came from the scene where Johnny proclaims his love for Baby before the movie's final epic dance performance. Let's watch. Nobody puts baby in a corner. Tell him. Sorry about the disruption, folks. But I always do the last dance of the season. But this year, somebody told me not to. So I'm going to do my kind of dancing with a great part. Sit down. They must so not only a terrific dancer. Dirty dance. Somebody who's taught me <laughs> that there are people willing to stand up for other people no matter what it costs them. Mmm. The best parts yet to come. I am declaring it now. Nobody puts baby in the corner is one of the most iconic movie lines of all time. Try to tell me it's not. 
Alas, if only all of our summers could end with a sultry summer dance routine. And next up, one of my favorites, Poetic Justice. Janet Jackson, Regina King, and Tupac Shakur gave legendary performances in this film. They play friends who road trip to Oakland, California, and basically fall in love along the way. Poetic Justice is another one of those films that will definitely have you crying and laughing, but I love this scene where the friends crash a random family barbecue. Let's take a look. I don't think so. My cousins, my cousins. Look at my family over here. My cousins. What's up, cousin? How you doing, boy? boy? Cousin. What's up, cousin? What's up? Well, I ain't seen you in I don't know where. Yeah. Yeah. Janet Jackson knows how to give a good stank face, and sometimes all you gotta say is cousin. And you guys, I'm pleading the fifth on if I've ever crashed a barbecue for a burger. Please don't judge me. And last, but certainly not least, I doubt you've ever gone a summer without watching this one, The Parent Trap. The remake stars Lindsay Lohan and tells the story of twin sisters who meet and realize they are really sisters at summer camp. The moment they see each other and realize how much they look alike is priceless. Let's take a look. <gasps> A new camp champ, come on. They look alike, that Those freckles, those freckles, those freckles get me every time. Why is everyone staring? <gasps> Can we have Kleenex handy? See please? what? I mean, resemblance between this part gets me every time. Resemblance between you and me? <laughs> oh my god, every time that movie gets me! You know, I watched this movie so many times as a kid, and you couldn't tell me Lindsay Lohan didn't have a twin sister in real life. It's definitely one to add to the rotation, y'all. Okay, we just gave you a taste of a few surefire summer flicks. Now I know, we outside again, but with this summer heat, nothing beats a good old movie night. We hope you have a blast watching or re-watching some of our favorite picks. So many great recommendations. Our thanks to Chris for bringing them to us and for giving us all a boost with your terrific reactions. We should mention you can download the Pop Viewers app from the App Store. That was our Pop Start Plus Nostalgic Summer Movie Special here on Today All Day. Thank you for tuning in. Hope you had as much fun as we did revisiting some of our favorite films from the past. It's been a pleasure to bring them to you. Have a great day. Oh, looky, looky, looky. Our favorite people are here. They're tuning in to our favorite streaming channel, Today All Day. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us for Today and 30. We've packed a lot into the next half hour for you, including new reaction from parents in Uvalde, Texas, reaction to the firing of the school's uh, embattled police chief, the school district's police chief there. Full report just ahead. Uh, and then we're going to look at some big changes coming to professional golf, some of them being driven by the sport's biggest name. Of course, we're talking about Tiger Woods coming up the new way he's using his star power and his influence. Also, how about some pickleball? Okay. Pickleball on the plaza. We got to try out our skills or lack thereof. And we also learned some new ones as well as we hit the court to play the nation's fastest growing sport. So game on, all coming up on Today, Today in 30. 30. First, that we are going to start with that breaking news overnight out of Uvalde, Texas. The school board there voting to fire its police chief, who's been widely faulted over the response by his officers at Robb Elementary. That decision unanimous, coming exactly three months to the day after the tragic mass shooting. NBC's Priscilla Thompson is in Uvalde for us. Hey, Priscilla, good morning. Good morning, Hoda. Craig, emotions were running high at last night's meeting with the families erupting in applause when it was announced that Pete Arredondo would be fired. But this morning, those families also making it clear that this is far from over. This morning in Uvalde, in battle school police chief Pete Arredondo has been fired. All in favor? Motion passes unanimously. Emotions among students and families quickly running high. I have messages for Pete Arredondo and all the law enforcement that were there that day. Turn in your badge and step down. You don't deserve to wear one. Our babies are dead. Our teachers are dead. Our parents are dead. The termination comes exactly three months after a gunman claimed the lives of 19 children and two teachers at Robb Elementary. 
Brett Cross, the uncle and guardian of Uzziah Garcia, says victims like Uzziah deserve justice. He's never going to graduate from high school. He's never going to have his first date, his first car. None of that. He will forever be 10 years old. Though absent from the meeting, Arredondo having his say in a lengthy 17 page statement sent to the school board, his lawyer accusing the board of an unconstitutional public lynching, writing the board has not followed proper procedure and refuses to provide a written complaint against Arredondo, adding none of his decisions or actions demonstrate a failure to meet the accepted standards of conduct for law enforcement officers in similarly situated school districts in Texas. Arredondo has faced widespread scrutiny for the delayed response to the shooting. Officials say it took authorities 77 minutes to engage the shooter. The shots have come in through that wall, so you know. The Texas legislature releasing a fact-finding report last month, faulting the police response for egregiously poor decision-making, adding officers failed to prioritize saving the lives of innocent victims over their own safety. In that report, Arredondo telling the committee he didn't consider himself the incident commander. But Uvalde families glad to see some results even three months later. We did something. We got something accomplished finally. And no word yet on whether Arredondo plans to appeal uh, this decision. His attorney yesterday afternoon calling for him to be reinstated with back pay and benefits. We did reach out to both Arredondo and his attorney after this decision was announced, but have not heard back. Hoda? Yeah, Priscilla, it's so hard to believe it took three months for some action to happen there. But there was also a special moment recently. Uh, one of the survivors, a little girl, honored in a big way in Texas. Tell us about that. That's right. Ten-year-old Maya Zamora was honored by the Houston Astros, asked to throw out that first ceremonial pitch at the game on Tuesday. Fans there standing to their feet and erupting in applause. And that's not all. Zamora actually lived near the shooter, making it too hard for her to return home. A former player is now stepping in to help build her a new home. And as you may remember, Maya was the last shooting victim to be released from the hospital. She spent 60 six days there before walking out to into a path of cheers and applause. Hoda. Oh, sweet, sweet Maya. Wow. Priscilla, thank you so much. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? Welcome back to today. We got a lot to celebrate on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody's good, and that's it. You open the door for so many people. I love working with people. I did not do any of this by myself. Hello. Lizzo, you put a smile on yes. every single face. It feel like Christmas and my birthday or something. <laughs> For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. You open the door for so many people. I love working with people. I did not do any of this by myself. Hello. Lizzo, you put a smile on yes. every single face. It feels like Christmas and my birthday or something. <laughs> Let's turn to some big changes coming to professional golf, and some of them being driven by the sport's biggest name. Of course, we are talking about uh, Tiger Woods. Yeah, Tiger's taken on more of a vocal role of late, including holding a, a players-only meeting recently to talk about the future of the PGA Tour. NBC News Now anchor Joe Fryer has all the details. Joe, good morning. Hey, good morning. More money, more pros, more action. The PGA Tour is now punching back against its controversial competitor, the Saudi-backed Live Golf League, hoping to hang on to players and fans. And it's largely thanks to Tiger Woods, who is stepping up as a leader in a sport he has dominated for so long. 
Tiger Woods is a household name, an undisputed golfing legend. With 15 major championships and a record-tying 82 PGA Tour wins, he has dominated the sport and generated excitement like few other modern athletes. This scene. But Woods' career took a horrifying turn last February after a single car crash nearly ended his life. After the accident, which seriously injured his right leg, Woods admitted his career on the course would never be the same. I can play certain events here and there, uh, but on a full-time level, no, that will never happen again. Now, golf's biggest name is trying to revolutionize the sport once again. Yes, it is. <laughs> off the course, using his influence to protect the legacy of the PGA Tour against a challenger gaining ground in the game. The controversial Saudi-backed Live Golf offered big bucks to entice several major champions like Phil Mickelson and Dustin Johnson to jump ship from the PGA. Woods himself was offered at least $700 million to join Live. I think that uh, what they've done is they've, they've turned our, their back on what has allowed them to get to this position. The 46-year-old turned down the money, instead advocating for his peers in the PGA Tour's future. He has taken on the role of spokesman. He never did that before. Last week, Woods and four-time major champion Rory McIlroy held a players-only meeting to discuss ways to improve the game, including marquee events and more prize money. Woods' leadership role speaking volumes. And I think if, if someone like him is passionate about it, that's, um, I mean, no offense to all of us, but that's really all that matters. Woods and McElroy also announced their own golf league in partnership with the PGA Tour. It's called TGL, a series of primetime events in a high-tech custom-built arena featuring teams of superstar golfers, giving fans, especially younger ones, a chance to watch Woods and their favorites up close. To be able to see him still showcase his skills on prime time on TV without really any wear and tear on his body, I think it is a really good use of his time. Responding to the tour's changes, Live Golf writes in a statement, Live Golf is clearly the best thing that's ever happened to help the careers of professional golfers. Guys, Tiger seems to disagree. We'll obviously be watching for how he continues to work on persuading those golfers to stick with him in the PGA Tour. All right, Joe, thank you. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? News is happening now. A look at what's making headlines around the world. We're coming on the air with breaking news. This is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We've transformed our plaza into a, a full-on pickleball court. Nice. We've invited two of the best pro players in the world to give us some in, tips. In the world. Yes. Okay, but Chanel, yes. you are dressed up. You're going to be our referee. There's really no referee pickleball, yeah, but, but that's cool. okay. That's what we do. So here's the deal. I hit the court with the pre-picklers. <laughs> 
clubs that have popped up across the country as the pickleball craze grows. It's the fastest growing sport in America. Five million pickleball players and growing. Among them, names you'll know. Leonardo DiCaprio, Jamie Foxx, and the Cloonies. Even Super Bowl champion Drew Brees has joined the pickleball craze, becoming co-owner of a team. Never signed a pickleball before. The sport, a mix of tennis, badminton, and ping pong, initially exploded in retirement communities. Today, there's more than 38,000 courts across the country and multiple leagues and tournaments with big payouts. Oh, yeah. The Association of Pickleball Professionals Tour gave out a total of $2 million in prizes this year. Are you kidding me? But not everyone is in it for the money. It's a passion for the sport, for the pretty picklers of Far Hills, New Jersey. It's a really inclusive sport. Anyone can pick up a paddle and play and be pretty good at it. Carrie Shannon started the club three years ago. The Pretty Picklers now prove the sport can be both competitive and casual for pretty much anyone. Some people think it's actually a bunch of older people, but I think it really is a sport for all ages. And as I soon found out, you got it. it's a great workout and a whole lot of fun. Okay, let me go. Okay, okay, okay. All right. We're going to win this. No pressure. I see why you have to do this all day. <laughs> Even as the sport expands at an unprecedented pace and the debate rages over how pickleball should grow, most players are just enjoying their newfound hobby. My kids joke that I'm in a sorority at my age because it really is a lot of fun. You can spend as much time doing it as you want. There's no question pickleball will be sticking around. Even if you're a beginner, you can play with advanced people. Pickleball is so open to everybody and it's such a nice community. All right, so now that we've given you a little All right, introduction pretty to pickleball, go. let's introduce you to some bona fide stars of the sport. We have top-ranked players, Ben Johns here, and Jesse Irvin here on the plaza. Jesse came all the way in from L.A. Yeah. Thanks for being here. So I know you stopped playing tennis because of joint pains. You pick up pickleball. Yes. When did you realize that pickleball had become this, this thing? Uh, I think from day number two of when I started playing. Yeah. Like day one, I was like, oh, yeah. I don't know. By day two, I was hooked. Well, You're hooked. It's a I lot. Hooked. It's a lot like tennis. A lot of people are just learning about this. Ben, I mean, how does it feel to be like on top of the world in the pickleball world? Uh, I mean, yeah, no, it's a great feeling. It's a privileged position to be in. Um, but you know, it's it's a new sport, and I think there's a lot of new players coming in, and everybody's enjoying Wait, it. Are you ranked what number one? What <laughs> number one? <laughs> Wait, so you're, you're playing with the top ranked you're player. You're playing with the top player. Play with number one. Don't worry, so he'll carry okay, you. Yeah, no, Real okay. quick. <laughs> okay, should we start? It's time to All right. start. How do we do it? So I've never played. Where do I stand? Okay. So I apologize. I oh, no, no, no. All right. You, so you're right. gonna start, Hoda. Who has the ball? ball. Yeah. Oh, just wait, I do. Ball. Just watch the, the ball. ball. Watch the ball. Do I stand? Right, ready? Can we split Hoda, the line? you start. Well, we're gonna see who serves wait, first. Hold on. Okay, so oh, they're oh, gonna okay. serve first. Go on this side. There's a whistle. Yeah. Yeah. Start up there. You're gonna, gonna stand here. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Really quickly, just so people at home know, okay? Points are scored only by the serving team. Serving has to happen behind the baseline. When the ball is served, the receiving team must let it bounce before returning it, right? And then the serving team must let it bounce before returning it. And then stay out of the kitchen. All right, this kitchen, right? Here we go. You ready? I don't, don't want to dazzle you. We're but. ready. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> nice save. Yours, yours. Go, Greg, go. You got nice. this. Go. Yours. Yes, Greg, go. Attack him. There yes. you go. Oh. Yes. Oh, okay. 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 Wait, okay. Wait, okay. Wait, we get to serve. You serve. You serve. serve. So you now serve. you're going to stand back here with me. Serve. Yeah. So, she's so now we're back you. here. Oh, uh -oh. So let's start back here with you? Yeah. I'm scared. I'm going to let the ball bounce right. once and then it's like. Okay. Here we go. Don't hit it to him. Why well, can't I have to? <laughs> That's a serve to me. Good call. <laughs> Good call. I got yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, now we're going to work our way in. Oh, that's an athlete. Oh, oh no. no. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. It's 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 all right, you ready? Wait, where do I, I don't stand? think so, but oh, you right keep going. Because he's going to hit it right to you. Yeah. He's going to hit it right to you. <laughs> I know your back's tired you know, from counting it. He's going to hit it right to you. He knew it. She knew it. Yeah. Oh. Oh. It's okay, Craig. It's okay. Oh. That would have been so good, but guess what? You get to serve. I get to serve. We didn't oh. lose a point. It has the bounce ones? Oh, you hold Just, that. Oh, so you can walk. serve it into it's that high, 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 high. Got it. Okay. Come on, Craig. Perfect. Oh, 
That's a try. fault. That's a fault. <laughs> Don't get a redo. 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 Yes, sir. You hit it, sir. Go, Craig, go. Okay, okay. Same thing. You got it, baby. Hit it, hit it, spin it. Nice. Yeah, it's good. Nice. Of course. Mine? Yep. Oh, oh. You put some English on that. Okay, you got it, sir. Oh, I saw what you did right, there. The score is two nothing. Yeah. Two to one. All right, two so now you're ben, back. Ben, it's all you. Come on, Ben. Come on, Ben. Come on, Ben. Come on back. Here we oh, go. Oh, back here? Yes. You. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Oh. 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 Is that count? Is that, does that count? That was pretty good. That was good. That was good. I, I didn't think so. I didn't think so. Who served it? It felt like it was too easy. That was in the kitchen. All right, it was in the kitchen, he said. It was in the kitchen. It was in the kitchen. It didn't count. I liked it, though. Yeah, the real refs back here. Back up. All right, last one, last one. Winner takes all of this point. Yours. Takes all. Oh. Too much. That was so good. Hey, you guys. I can see why people enjoy this. You guys, it's addictive. I can see why people enjoy this. It's really fun, y'all. Thank you so much. It's the best. Y'all, thank you so much. You guys are great. NBC News, streaming free now. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. What do you love about fatherhood? The chaos, the learning. Is climate change one of your top priorities? What's your message to girls who want to make a difference in their own communities? Believe in yourself. And what do you love about fatherhood? The chaos, the learning. Is climate change one of your top priorities? What's your message to girls who want to make a difference in their own communities? Believe in yourself. Welcome back to you today. We've got a lot to celebrate on yes. this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody's good, and that's it! Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. You probably knew this, but fall, fall starts exactly four weeks from today. Well, Six days if we're talking about meteorological fall, but... Okay, for normal people, it starts four weeks from today. Uh, so if you still have the summer travel bug, uh, there's plenty of time to get away, folks. Editor-in-Chief of Travel and Leisure, Jackie Gifford, is here. Jackie's got some, some deals for a last-minute summer vacation. We're talking summer. Uh, before we get into that, though, let's ask you about, because we've been covering this all summer, the travel nightmares, the headaches, the delays, the cancellations, folks who might want to get away and take you up on one of these deals. What are some things they should keep in mind? I know travel's getting a little crazy, but there's some simple tips. One, take a nonstop flight. You want to avoid long layovers mm -hmm. because of all the flight schedule changes and get the earliest flight out. Because uh, if your flight does get canceled, that tends to be later on in the day. Yeah. And 24 hours before, go, go just go to the airline site and just check the status. You can also go to Flight Aware. Just stay updated and informed. I love when you come, because I'm always looking at your picks for the best yeah. last-minute oh, tricks and saying where we can go. <laughs> so this time, it looks like you're heading out west for yes. your first recommendation. San Inez Valley, California. This oh. is a great wine region. There are over 300 wineries in this part of California. It's just wow. two hours north of Los Angeles. I think, you know, again, wine travel, what's not to love, right? And you can do an olive oil tasting at Global Gardens. There's also a, an attraction called Ostrichland, USA. No joke, it's a huge zoo. You can go and feed ostrich and emu. They oh, have wow. over 100 on site. Mm -hmm. And then a property we're recommending is called Flying Flags. It's in Buellton. They have outdoor cabins, outdoor fire pits, poolside cabanas, and they also have tiki tents. So you can stay in a tiki that. tent oh, that's, up that's to awesome. a safari style tent. It's $143 oh, wow. a night. I think it's really fun and also I think very family friendly. Okay. That's great. Uh, living in the city, sometimes you just need that bit of nature. And the Catskill is not too far. 
cat, we were just talking yeah. about this. The Catskills are booming, you know, just close to New York City, but really becoming vib a vibrant cultural hub with lots of galleries and shops opening, rivers, you can go swimming, fly fishing. It's just a perfect time of year, I'd say now and into fall. Yeah. The Auto Camp Hotel is new. So this is a brand that's actually been opening properties all around our national parks. Mm -hmm. But what's special about the Catskills locations on 37 acres, and they have 65 vintage Airstreams that you can stay in. Wow. And then the base camp category, you can do the Airstream plus a tent. So if you're traveling in a group, it sleeps up to six, That's which really is really cool. great. That's they cool. have work by local artists, so it embraces the, you know, the local area. Yeah. That's wow. funky. Yeah. Let's go down south. Let's go from the Catskills to South Carolina. Yeah. Two historic towns there. Yes, Traveler's Rest and Greenville. So uh. what's what's special about this, the two towns are actually connected by beautiful. a 22-mile trail. It's called the Prisma Health Swamp Rabbit Trail. I own that trail. Gonna, it's beautiful. Oh, you have. Oh, okay. sure. I love Greenville. Oh, anything have, in Car South Carolina. He loves it. I love yeah. it. And Traveler's Rest, you know, it's always been a place where people, which uses a hub to go so the Blue, Blue oh, Ridge that's the restaurant. Oh, there you go. Right, down, right on Main Street there in Greenville. So oh, good. Okay, good. Well, I'll go have to check that out. Right. The other thing that I love about this area too, there's state parks to explore, and then we're recommending the Swamp Rabbit Inns. There are two of them, one in Traveler's Rest and one in Greenville. They're modern, quaint B&Bs, good for groups. You can go, they have communal kitchens, mm -hmm. cook yourself breakfast, cook yourself dinner, and the one in Traveler's Rest actually has a pool, which mm. is an added bonus. Okay. Absolutely. I'm interested in this one. Uh, there's a place in Florida, right? The Florida Keys? Ila Mirada. Yes. I think this is a great, a great place, Ila Mirada, the Florida Keys. I oh. think it's just a a great place to go if you like outdoors, fishing, you know, all sorts of water sports. But the Murata Way Cultural and Arts District also has tons of galleries. You can go and do a beer tasting at the Florida Keys Brewing Company. There's also Robbie's Marina, which has an outdoor marketplace. And then the Postcard Inn on the Beach, it's set on 14 acres. They have a private beach, modern beach chic rooms. They've got two pools, restaurants. So a good place to go if you're traveling with a group as well. And speaking of beer tasting, there's a place yes. in Colorado known for its craft breweries. Yes, Fort Collins. I think this is a place to go again for uh, breweries, distilleries. But Fort Collins is known because it was actually the Main Street was what inspired Walt Disney, the Main oh, Street really? at Disneyland. Oh, really? And oh, I wow. think this is a good place. Again, if you like outdoors, you can go uh, horseback riding, explore nature, biking, hiking, all those great things. And then the Armstrong Hotel, it has 54 rooms. It's right in the heart of, of Main Street. Mm -hmm. And you've got, you know, a skillets lounge and supper club with live music, all sorts of things to do. I think this is an underappreciated part of Colorado. We are back with a tasty edition of Try This Today. Grocery shopping can feel like a chore. So this morning, we're mixing up your usual shopping list with some new supermarket foods to try. I tried to talk directly. <laughs> Here to help us snack is senior editor at Bon Appetit, Mackenzie Chunk Fagan. Good morning to you. Good morning. Mackenzie. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming I'm going to like be the Monopoly gonna banker shop. here. I'm going to like, perfect. Like, very the supermarket the part. Here. Maybe you want to take right, these so first. This is the okay. first one. So these are things that perhaps you can go to the supermarket that you haven't tried before. That's right. right. These are new items. We're going to start over here in the frozen foods aisle. Okay. These are frozen cacio e pepe gnocchi mm -hmm. from Trader Joe's. Those are good. So if you look at the back, it's going to say that you should reheat it in the microwave mm -hmm. or on the stovetop. But we find that can lead to a little bit of a gummy gnocchi mm -hmm. so we say put them in the air fryer that's oh good. that's how you, you want them brown and crispy on the that's outside good. nice and gooey in the center that's good. just that's gave good. us forks and we've been picking at them that's the right it's time. finger food I like yeah. finger foods yeah. Yeah. yeah all right let's go over here okay over to the produce aisle now we call these rosé strawberries yes here's the thing I thought, oh, they're like strawberries that had been like soaked in rosé. That would be good. And that's not what these are. <laughs> you, can, you can DIY that yourself at home. But these are called rosé strawberries because of this beautiful blush pink color. And on the inside, it has this creamy white center. Oh, that's good. They're, they're good, delicious. right? Yeah. They're a little bit peachier than normal oh. strawberries, and they have a nice tartness, too. Mm. But not too tart. Not too tart. Really no, good. they're still a great strawberry. Oh, no, that's so, so good. We've got our strawberries, and now we have a topic. Let me get my cart. That's oh, right. Oh, so yeah. we are in the dairy aisle now. Okay. We have Vermont Creamery's Vanilla Creme Fresh. So Creme Fresh is mm. like a Wanna thicker, creamier sour cream. Vanilla. And this one is shot through with little flecks of vanilla bean. It's okay. really oh, delicious. I, I use it anywhere that I use whipped cream on top of a pie. I put it on grilled Ooh. peaches. Yeah. We it's have it on the rosé. Whipped cream. That's right. That's right. It's good. The vanilla flavor comes again? through, right? It's Vermont Creamery mm. Madagascar Vanilla Creme Fresh. That's, That's delicious. delicious. That's yeah. good. You're three for three today. Mm. Yeah, well, thank you. Oh, you know, Craig was right. Sometimes when we do these segments, no, the I viewers know. know. Sometimes I get we'll you. We'll tell you the That's truth. Really good. No, here's the thing. I saw this and I thought to myself, Mackenzie, 
What's wrong with American barbecue sauce? Oh, nothing is wrong with American barbecue okay. sauce, but Bachan's Japanese barbecue sauce is based on a family recipe from okay. the founder. Oh, it's got yeah. some soy sauce. It has mm -hmm. mirin in it, a little bit of ginger. There's yuzu flavor. There's Ooh, spicy. Nice. How spicy. Yuzu is a citrus fruit that has a nice mm -hmm. floral flavor. I'm going to try that. Delicious on oh, grilled meat. it's meats. definitely more... Japanese? Yeah. Mm, I also cool. like to incorporate this into ground beef when I'm making Ooh. hamburger patties at home. What you're, do you think? You're three for four. Okay. All right. right. I thought I was going to no. get you with wait, this one. I love about? this one. If you like that no, no, no. flavor, it's delicious. Well, try something else. Try yeah, did you try, try the traditional? Did you try the original? It's really good. Yeah. Okay, hot one spicy. Of no, we say yes. Okay, great. Do Two you out use of three. this as a marinade? Or? You can use it as a marinade, or you can just drizzle it on top of. We have chicken fingers yeah. here, any meat off the grill. Right, you can well, dip veggies wow. into it. We'll stop really eating and we'll move okay. on. But, this is uh, really but it's called, is Japanese barbecue sauce a new thing? or? It's not. It's a okay. traditional part of the you cuisine. Are, your mind is blown by this whole <laughs> Japanese barbecue sauce. I love, I love American know. barbecue sauce. Well, really good. Sure. All right, That's now we way. have okay. spicy dry food. Yeah, okay, we are in the one. snack aisle. Okay. I don't know. I'm nervous yeah. to try this one. Can you explain what this is? Sure, oh, yes. Spicy mangoes. So the good. founder grew up in Mexico and wanted to bring sweet and spicy dried mm. fruit to a larger audience. Okay. So we have dried fruit. We've got cranberries, mango. The strawberries are my favorite. And they're mm. dusted with a chili powder. Oh, that is spicy, though. One of our editors likes to garnish her spicy margarita with the strawberries. Did you try so. it? I'm waiting on y'all. <laughs> <laughs> try the strawberry. Try, try the strawberry. I'll put hot sauce on my mangoes sometimes. Exactly. And salt. Mm -hmm. And I just think this is delicious. It's a very popular way to spices. eat fruit in Mexico. Hmm. Okay. What do you think then? I'll take the mango. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nice. Okay. If you don't like spice, Strawberry maybe it's too. not for you. No, I love spice. That's an interesting. You that's know a, what it is? It's not. That is, that's an interesting flavor. But it's, it's like spicy. it's spicy right? on sweet. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Question. We are going to end over here okay, with. Let me put my stuff down here. Crunchy loops. These are the texture of a Cheeto, but they're baked, not fried, and they're made from red lentils. So there's actually oh. a decent amount of protein in each okay. bag. And we're going to try the sour cream and onion flavor, but they also come in barbecue All right. and tangy sweet chili. I do love the lentils. Last night for dinner, we had pasta made out of chickpeas, that bonza pasta. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's fantastic. We'd swear back in my house. Okay. But I love go. the repurposing of that. Oh. Good nutritional value. Oh, that's good. I mean, if you put good. sour cream and onion seasoning on cardboard, yeah. I would eat it. You know, but these are delicious. It's like a healthy funion. Yes, yeah. exactly. Is it healthy, though? Healthier yeah. than I a mean, funion? It has protein in it. Okay. Red Don't talk to anybody yet. Yeah, and they're baked. These are good, good. right? That's what are the flavors? A lot of flavors. Barbecue right and yeah. tangy sweet chili. You took the it's shopping off. very seriously. About it. Yes, she did. She's like, oh, I'll check you. You can head on over to check out. My role. I'm very excited for this. I think this was a success. Oh, good. I'm so glad. Is there Thank, a time? You, you. Thank you, guys. This is, this is a good one. It's always a dice roll with me. It's McKinsey. always a dice roll. You never know. That's right. Like, He's keep you on your toes. Today's Thank the winner. Thank you so much. Phew. Man, that was a lot. That was good. Just getting started, though. Uh -huh. Come back tomorrow. Country star Mickey Guyton will mm. be here on a Friday, rocking the plaza. We love, love Mickey Guyton. It's going to be a blast. You don't want to miss it. We'll see you then. Over the years, I have been lucky enough to step into the Today Show kitchen and watch the best chefs from around the world teach us some incredible recipes. And we had made that pesto, which was, oh, exactly. darn. Oh, Again, I almost got out of this one clean. <laughs> Turn it down. Oh, my God. I had one job. None of which I've mastered because, well, I actually don't know the first thing about how to cook. And unfortunately for today's culinary coach and my dear friend, Siri Daly, she's experienced my kitchen chaos up close a few too many times. The biggest step is slicing it. Oh boy, come on, oh my gosh. Well, I'm ready to put that behind me. Now, Siri's gonna teach me some kid-friendly favorites, including mac and cheese and chicken tenders with a few special ingredients. Plus, I'm gonna learn, finally, how to make a perfect grilled cheese. The real test will be to see if our kids love what we make, and they are a tough crowd. But I'm excited to give it a try, so let's get started. Hi, Siri. Well, hello. Thank you for having me. We meet again in the kitchen. I know. Although, usually, you're doing the cooking, and I'm doing the staring. Not today. Or the my drinking. Friend, not today. Well, you know that my kids don't have the healthiest of eating habits. I really do want to learn some basic things so I could feed him a decent dinner, maybe sneak in some vegetables. We can do that. Our plan for today is, first, Savannah will learn how to make a perfect grilled cheese. Then we'll cook the noodles for the mac and cheese, make the cheese sauce, bread and bake the chicken tenders, prepare a special sauce, and serve. 
Every Saturday, okay. Charlie wants a grilled cheese for lunch. And I try to do it, but I end up, I put it on the griddle, I put butter, then I end up, the cheese doesn't melt, but the outside is burnt. Right. I end up putting it in the microwave, it's a disaster. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna start with our bread. Okay. I'm gonna use some classic whole wheat, but we have sourdough here, Italian. I've even done it with English muffins, which is mm. kind of fun. I love that. And cinnamon raisin bread, because I know Charlie has a hankering for that. You choose what you would like. I'm gonna okay. go, like I said, with just the regular kind of whole wheat. I'm gonna try whole wheat too. We have salted butter here, just one side of the bread. Okay, okay. we'll see, I this do both sides. This is the side that's gonna go on the griddle, and okay. that will get it all nice and gooey and buttery and golden brown. You just basically wanna kinda smother it and make sure you get it all the way up to the edges so that not a single piece of bread is without. But now if I did wanna do your mayonnaise trick, I would do butter and then mayonnaise. Yeah, and, and oh. then maybe just do like a little less butter, a little okay. less mayonnaise so you're not you know smothering it, but I have found it does tend to enhance the flavor a little bit, but hmm. okay. there's nothing wrong with salted butter. All and right. you always keep your butter out on the kitchen counter, which I, shocked me. I thought you had to keep it in the fridge. I keep salted butter out. Salted butter tends to last longer on the counter. My grandma did that, my mom did that. And then it's nice and soft, exactly. you're not like, you yep. know. Okay, I did mine. Okay. I beat you, did I do enough? Okay, now we're gonna use about two ounces of cheese, which is roughly like four slices. And this is a pretty gonna... thin slice, like yes. some of my so, white American that... cheese is thick. Right. So if it's thicker, then maybe two slices. Okay. But, um, I'm gonna try four here, and again, okay, now, 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 what? we're gonna what? turn oh, shoot. this over, because we wanna do it, that's Ooh. that's the side that's gonna go on the griddle, right? Okay. Okay. So, eh, already, already screwed all right. up. It's all right, this is pretty, like, forgiving is recipe. Is it okay that it's, like, hanging over the edges? I get kind of obsessy about that. You wanna get them just kind of right up to the edges, but it's okay. okay if it hangs off a little, because honestly, that's the best part. I don't know if your kids make you cut off the crust, um, but my kids do, and then, like, Pro mom tip, you just eat it. <laughs> exactly. So and that's your lunch. Yeah, and that's your lunch. Um, Enjoy. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now we're gonna put it on the griddle carefully because it's hot. Wait, what did we put on this? Nothing? No. Nope. No, because no, no oil, no, no cooking the, spray. The butter is, is is basically your cooking spray. Okay. Okay. Now we're gonna not touch it for about two and a half minutes. You kinda wanna go slow and low, and then I'm gonna show you a little trick. After that, oh, by the way, we have some. Oh, what is this? Some, some spiked lemonade, if you if you would like oh. to cheers. Now we're to getting our closer to cheeses. our reality. Yeah, exactly. Mm. We'll, have, we'll have regular lemonade for the children. Yes, but, um, exactly. <laughs> okay, so this is going on. Yes, we don't want to move it because that will disrupt the cooking process, and we're really trying to get the bread nice and. That's funny because I, what I'd be doing is pressing this down. Press, press, yeah. press, press. Another thing, yeah. make sure you use a plastic spatula oh. because anything metal will scrape your griddle oh, or even okay. your nonstick pan. That's key. Okay. Then, let me show you our little trick. Okay, you have one over here. This is called a burger dome. Okay, so after we flip this, we're gonna cover it with our burger dome for another about two minutes. Okay. And that's gonna ensure that the cheese melts and gets oh. nice and ooey gooey and the bread still crisps. Could I put just like a glass lid of a half for a pot? Not glass, I would use again like a metal bowl or a pot, you could use a pot. Okay. It's whatever you use, if it doesn't have a handle like this, use pot holders to remove it. Why is everyone warning me all the time about the pans are hot? Well, you know, I know. Listen, I have <laughs> I, I have burn marks from all my times in the kitchen, so you're not alone. Okay. Um, I know, right, We're hot. gonna flip them now. See, I find that you hard. You need to use yeah. your fingers. Oh, is that to make okay? Sure. Yeah, that's Ooh, that looks look. good. Look how pretty. Oh, wow. perfect. But now the now cheese is not press melted. It down a little bit. So that's why now we grab our burger domes. Mm -hmm. So our... right away goes the yep. burger dome. I'm going to get one of these. That's it. I wonder where I've been going wrong. Maybe you're trying to do it too fast. I feel like a lot of people just want to crank up the heat. Yeah. And that will just burn your bread and your cheese won't melt enough. What if like, I wanted to add like turkey or ham yes. or something oh, like that? A, this is just like your basic grilled cheese. Now you could add tomatoes, bacon, ham, turkey, anything. When would um, I add it in this process? In the beginning, right? right oh, yeah. okay. When you put on the cheese, you would add whatever else you want. All right, I think we're ready. Okay. Let's see. Ooh, look at, oh, look at the wow. meltiness on the side. Yours is meltier than mine, but it looks well, good. Sometimes it depends on the cheeses. Mm -hmm. I think that looks great. Okay. All right. Ooh, I mean, this truly yeah, does look, look great. Just mm -hmm. slice it. You know what my mom used to make? Do you do triangles or rectangles? I like triangles, rectangles. rectangles, or strips. Um, my mom used to do fried bologna a lot. Ooh. I know, it's very 70s. Mmm. That's mm. so good, mm -hmm. though. So good. Oh, my mm. gosh.
I'm a culinary genius now. We did it. Grilled cheese. cheese. All right. I needed to know this. On to the next. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. This is so healthy. Doesn't it just again. feel good to be back to it school? Does. Start today. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. This is so healthy. Doesn't it just feel good to be back to school? Start today. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. This is so healthy. Doesn't it just feel good to be back to school? Start today. NBC News, streaming free now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We're going to make a baked mac and cheese with a special ingredient. There's going to be cauliflower blended into the sauce. I'm telling you, your kids will not know. Okay? Sneaking in vegetables. Yep, is the not name above of the it. Game. Not above it. So we have boiling water over here. Yeah. We want to always season our oh, water yes. before. So you can generously season All right, with I'm the salt. I'm trying to get better at being generous. Okay. Because you're um, a very generous person. Yes, but not with salt. <laughs> and thank you. Thank you for the vote of confidence. I mean, like, I would normally have thought that's enough. More. Should we taste it? So the reason you want to salt it so generously, especially in this case, is the pasta's only cooking for six minutes. So it's not going to have a lot of time to absorb that. I think that. I need more. Let's just do more. I mean, you can. It should taste real salty. Yeah. Instead of using your finger. Yeah. Just, like, pour some in. Oh, that just seems so excessive. Oh, I can't. OK. How about right. that? Okay. Good, All good, right. good. OK, pour in. This is a pound of elbow mac. A pound of elbow mac. So just take that wooden spoon and give it a stir a couple mm -hmm. times just to break up the pasta. You don't want it to stick together. Do I keep the heat on high? Uh-huh. OK. You should be good. OK. Now, for a nice little shortcut, mm -hmm. I have this cauliflower that you can steam in the microwave. That is cheating. It's not cheating. We are busy mothers. There is nothing wrong with it. <laughs> okay. We're microwaving? We're microwaving it. Put it this side down so that the Scandal! microwave. Just do five. And that'll give us a good uh, timing on the pasta. I mean, if you want, you can always cut up your florets and steam it. Like, I've done that, obviously, but you know what? I on know, a busy night. I know my way around a microwave. This is Monterey Jack, which mm -hmm. I'm going to take. That is cheddar, okay. eight ounces each. Okay. We are going to, I use the, yeah, the, I big, like side. the big side. Yep. I'm good on the grating until we get to the very end. Right. That's when you kind of just want to, you know, scoot your hands back as much as you can. I'm not going to lie, my tricep hurts. I know. So then I, you don't have to go to the gym either. Oh, this is I, like your fingers are getting awfully close. Just keep going with this. <laughs> Put it down. Are you scaring you? <laughs> yes. Scaring you a little bit? I'm scaring myself. OK. See, like when I get to the very end, honestly, yeah. this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to break it up because, again, okay. like little pieces mm -hmm. will not. Oh, see? Yeah. OK. I don't know why. I don't know why people are nervous. <laughs> Does the recipe call for blood? <laughs> I can't tell you. I think my arm's going to be sore tomorrow. Yeah. All right, well, now, what there, we're going to do okay, is yeah. we're going to reserve 3 fourths cup of the cheese. Can it live together? Yep. OK. OK, we're going to put our cheese on this same sheet okay. pan to just make some room. Mine can come over yes. here. Oh, there's our cauliflower. Well, the cauliflower's done. We'll let it sit for just a second because it's okay. hot. And why don't we drain the pasta? OK. All right. Let me guess, hot okay. pot? Ooh, it's heavy one, too. I know. So right into the okay. drainer. Just pour it all in. Yeah. Right? And then put some cold water, rinse the pasta, because that's going to stop the cooking process. Oh, OK. Yeah. Cold so water. So just cold water. It'll just stop the it? cooking. Yep. OK. It's not going to get too soggy? No. And then you can kind of just shake it, let it drain in the sink, and that's it. We'll leave it there while we make our sauce. So do you want to go grab the cauliflower from yes. the microwave? Yes. I better just, bring a thing in case it's hot. Yeah, just Hold on to like the edges of the bag. Okay. Ah, just kidding. <laughs> Look, it says pick up here. Yeah, well, that's helpful. So convenient. That's friendly. Okay, 
now we are going to cut that open and we're gonna pour it right into the blender. So All right, that. so now we're going to add one and a half cup of milk. One we have whole milk here. You can okay. use 2%, but I wouldn't go any lower than that just because it's gonna add yeah. flavor. And right. it's helpful if the milk is at room temperature. If oh. it's not, you can always like microwave it for like 15 to 20 seconds. It'll just help when you make your roux that everything's kind of consistent. I fear kitchen machinery. Anything with blades is a little scary. Yeah. Does that seem good? That seems good. Okay, then what? Okay, so on. on. And then what? And we'll probably hit the puree button if your okay. blender has that. There you go. Wow. And we're gonna let it go just for a little bit. I always feel I have to hold it. Okay. All right, that's looking pretty good. I think we can stop it and just, we wanna blend it until it's really, really smooth and silky and creamy because any chunks might, you know, Sound off the children <laughs> alarm. Alert, vegetable, <laughs> alert, vegetable. Okay, Ooh, that How looks milky. Look? That looks very I good, yeah. I think it does. Why don't you grab that butter, All right. and we're just gonna butter our casserole dish. Just How am I doing here. Okay. We're gonna, I mean, you can like use I would your just hands, go, like, take but the stick I just like and to stick it around. Uh, yeah, you could do that. Or I, or you could just kind of like scoop it up with this and Let's, just get the sides Your in. way seems what? classier. <laughs> I just don't like mess. I'm just you I know, don't so OCD. You really you are. Go. Is that good? Okay. Yeah. That's a little more. Seem you like can do much. more. Yeah. yeah, like I like to yeah, get. Yeah, I would in there. get a good goop. I usually just take the stick. Perfect. Am I getting the sides? There's nothing too? wrong with taking the stick. Yeah, sides okay. and and bottom. This is where my type A personality yeah, really comes yeah. in. I'm like, I don't. Want, I want every side done yep. just right. I don't want to mess it up. You know, I want to get an Perfect. A. I want to get an A, a plus on buttering the casserole. Dish. Okay. Okay. That's over. Now we're gonna measure out one more cup of milk. Okay. There you go. Got it. Three tablespoons of flour. You can measure out and put in that little bowl. Okay. This is mise, gonna be or mise en place. Absolutely, wow. Or mise en place. <laughs> then we are going to start our roux. Um, I'll put the cheese over here just for okay. later. Um, okay, the first thing we're gonna do is get four tablespoons of butter, mm -hmm. and you can kind of okay. eyeball that. I, you know. Well, I can't, but I know that a, one stick It's about is a half, half of a stick. stick. Yeah. So it's like that. Perfect, and okay. just throw that right in the pot. I enjoy this part. Yeah. I just like to see how the butter skates around. It, you know? Right? It's really pretty. It seems like and it's having it a good time. It smells good. Yeah. This is what cooking should be. <laughs> you can add the flour. We have to whisk constantly. That's why we love to have everything ready because this is kind of something you have to babysit. Yes. You don't really want to walk away at this point. Okay. Just make sure that you try to mm -hmm. avoid the clumps. Okay. Crop and then. Out. When add we the, add the milk, we're also gonna do it sort of slowly. We don't okay. wanna add it all at once. I like to dump it in, so don't because do that. Because we wanna activate the flour and the starch. Does that look frothy we, to you? It's looking good, yeah. See how it's starting to bubble a little? Yeah. I like to, I, this is awesome. I'm so impatient. I just, I'm like, let's get in there. Perfect, now you can add some more. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is coming together. Yeah. And then next, we're gonna add our milky okay, cauliflower I, mixture. But don't I wanna get this a little smoother mm -hmm. first? That's good. Woo! <laughs> God, this is worse. Not since my Jane Fonda aerobics routine <laughs> have I worked out this hard. Yeah, but you probably okay. did that this morning. Right? I know, I'm like, yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Add the cauliflower puree and stir to combine. Is this as little at a time Switch. thing? Like no, this? Or can I just dump it? You've already on? added the, yeah, you're good to go now. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And it's Wait, this start is, to thicken. This is so right? sneaky. You would so never sneaky. know this is cauliflower. Yep. And then we're gonna add our cheese. Bring to a simmer. Now is this a simmer? Yeah, because see of, the bubbles starting to yeah. form. Okay. Yeah. Whisking constantly. Cook for one to two minutes until thickens. Do you think that's thick enough? It's getting there. Another like way to tell is if like once you kind of lift it, you want to just see some of it some of the remains on the spoon. I mean, this whole constant stirring. Yeah. It's like it a is, baby, you always have to be watching it. five minutes of, of like babysitting. Yeah. All it right. This seems cooked. Yep, so now let's add our cheese. Okay. All right, I'm just gonna dump it in. Okay. Yep, and then just continue to stir. I'm gonna have a big splash. Okay. Perfect. Now I'm gonna get my stirrer out. Yeah. Goodbye, whisk. Goodbye, whisk. You've done a good job, but we're moving on. Okay. Mm, this is my favorite part, Yeah, too. this looks pretty so yummy. Cheesy. Season with salt oh, to taste, but and I'm not there ready for that. Here's yet. where we grab the taste. magic, magic spoon, spoon box. box. Do you want to taste it, or are you trusting me? I'm gonna trust you. I trust your palate. I think it needs a little salt. Some salt. Go for it. Okay. Well, not a lot though. Okay. It's pretty tasty. There you go. I mean, More? there's salt in the cheese naturally, and so you know that's good. I mean, okay. I don't know. 
The salting thing is very um, perplexing to me. Now, I'm going to grab. Like, I don't want to over salt. The but pasta. I, don't I know. That's why you can always, you know, you can. Now what happens? Put some on. Now I'm going to break this pasta up just a little bit so mm -hmm. that. It doesn't clump together. Oh, you add the pasta yes. to here, but uh -huh. it says remove from the heat, so I think I need to okay, turn it off. Okay, you want to turn it off? Yep. Okay. And then it's on. I kind of declumped the pasta so oh, okay. we don't splatter ourselves. I mean, this is starting to look Stir real that good. Up. We're gonna I would put eat it just like this. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it's going to get so nice and baked and crispy on the top, mm -hmm. and because we're going to add that cheese that we reserved. Mm -hmm. So I'm just basically trying to coat as much now. This is just about yep. stirring and coating. And then we can just pour it in because we can also kind of stir it up in here. Mm -hmm. oh, All right, I'm going to transfer it. Are you ready? Yep. Did you feel ready. good about that decision? Ready. Oh, I didn't taste I it will again, have a but sip I'm just going to While trust. you transfer it. Okay. I kind of like this. I'm not doing any work. <laughs> you are. <laughs> Trying to explain this to me is work. Okay. Mm. Okay. Okay. You got ready? it? Yeah. Yum. Yum. Ah, it looks so good. Okay. Now Yum. just sprinkle the top with this remaining mixture oh, with of the cheese. remaining cheese. Just okay. I'm gonna just eat some. Yeah. Oh, you do that. I love that. And this cheese will get kind of brown, probably, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So now we're gonna bake it in a 350 degree oven for about 45 minutes mm -hmm. until it cooks all the way through, gets nice and hot and gooey. The sauce will thicken some more in the oven. Great. Perfect. Now, if I wanted to just stop it right here, cover it, and then bake it at a later yes, day, could I do, do that? that? You could absolutely do that. Okay. Put it in the fridge, even in the freezer if you wanted to, but in, in the fridge, just make sure you know you kind of let it sit at room temperature for a little bit before you put it in the oven, and it's good to go. Should I put it in? Yeah. Top oven. Okay. I'm so proud. Me too. <laughs> Remember that time? <laughs> okay. Good job. All right. High five. Yay! News is happening now. A look at what's making headlines around the world. We're coming on the air with breaking news. This is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. today. This is so healthy. Doesn't it just weekend. feel good to be back to school? It does. Yes. Start today. You open the door for so many people. I love working with people. I did not do any of this by myself. Hello. Lizzo, you put a smile on yes. every single face. It feel like Christmas or my birthday or something. <laughs> These are our missing daughters and sons. We need anyone who saw something to come forward. She was wearing a black jacket, a black top. I'm going to bring my son home alive. Dateline, Missing in America. Listen to the full season now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. So the mac and cheese is in the oven. Mm. Now we are going to make some Parmesan crusted chicken fingers, Yum. chicken tenders. My kids live on chicken fingers. Right? And so first we're going to set up a dredging station. So first, why don't you grab the flour mm -hmm. and we're going to add 3 fourths cup to this pie pan. Mm -hmm. And I like to use pie pans mm -hmm. because it's just the perfect shallow dish yeah. with, you know, the ridged That's sides. a good idea. Yeah. Now we're going to use three egg whites. Have you ever separated I have. I okay. think I do know how to do it. Three do egg want, whites. Do you want me to do one with you? Or well, do you let wanna... me try, okay, and you great. can grate me. And then, yeah, you can put the um, egg white. Egg white there. will go in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, egg yolk. There we go. Oh shoot. Okay. You got any extra eggs? <laughs> Just... And it's I know. okay. So it's this not isn't pretty. like this is not pretty, but I can do it. Yeah. That's perfect. But I'm going to give you a little tip. 
Instead of cracking the egg on a side, crack it on the countertop. Oh, really? It'll, it'll give you a more even shell. Sometimes when you crack it, there you go. Oh. When you crack it on the- Oh my gosh, that's shoot, so much right? better. There you go. Wow, game change. Uh huh. Um, okay, so now the panko, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we're gonna use about a Is cup that the of panko. Yep, that's okay. the panko. You can use breadcrumbs too. I just like panko because I feel What's like the it difference? Gets, gets a little crispier. This is a Japanese breadcrumb. Oh, okay. Um, breadcrumbs tend to just be more fine. One cup. And okay. I like the crisp that panko offers. Okay, good yeah, to know. So I, one, I actually always wondered what the heck yeah. the difference was. Okay. One I'm cup just of sprinkling that. it around. Okay. And then a third cup of Parmesan. Okay. Right there. Mm -hmm. And then you can use that whisk to kind of. Perfect. Okay. And just kind of combine that. So now our dredging station mm -hmm. is all set. Okay. Um, chicken. We have five or yeah, five chicken tenders here, which you can find at the store. Mm -hmm. If you don't find chicken tenders, you can always buy breasts and kind of just cut them into strips. Okay. So now, what am I doing? Just laying just it on the pan. Just lay it on here because it's just gonna be a vessel for us to season the chicken. So I'm not. This isn't the pan I'm gonna no. cook it. No. Okay. So I don't need to grease nope. it or whatever. Okay. Perfect. So it could be a plate, could be anything. Yeah. And then um, season generously, the word of the day. <laughs> Both sides? Both sides. So you can okay. use those tongs to flip it over. Because this is really the only point other than like the Parmesan mm -hmm. that we're seasoning. That That's great. That looks great. I'm getting Perfect. more yes. like yes. liberal with I like my it. Okay. That's salt. Good? Awesome. Yep. And then turn it. Okay. Perfect. And I guess you could okay. do pepper if your kids liked it, but it's always a little yeah. it's questionable exactly. whether they do. Is that good? That's great. Okay. That's perfect. All right. Okay. Now we are going to spray our sheet over there with some baking spray. Okay. Because then we're going to put it right on to our Are we baking these? Dish. Yes, we're going to bake them. Oh, we're not frying? We're not frying. Oh, that's I mean, healthier, you, right? You know, yeah. Okay. So first we're going to coat in the flour. You can just do one at a time. So just dropping mm -hmm. it? How much? Just make sure just it gets a little just bit? coated on both sides. Like that's good? Yeah, that's okay. great. What about the sides? And no? then, okay, then to the egg whites. And I'm just coating both sides uh -huh. too? Okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. You can kind of like let some of that drip off because mm -hmm. sometimes it can get a little goopy. Perfect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then into the panko. Okay. Get that nice and coated. Yeah, this is the good stuff, yes. right? Yes, and you can, can yeah, then. perfect. Okay, that's good? Yeah. Okay. And just set it there. Set it down. And okay. Then and then here we go. Repeat. Ooh, it's the last one. There we go. This lucky guy is gonna get all this good stuff. Okay. All right. Into the bottom oven. All right. 425 convection oven. How long? 450. 450, like I said. <laughs> About 10 minutes. Hallie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. These are our missing daughters and sons. We need anyone who saw something to come forward. She was wearing a black jacket, a black top. I'm going to bring my son home alive. Dateline, Missing in America. Listen to the full season now. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. This is so healthy. Doesn't it just weekend. feel good to be back to it school? Does. Yes. Start today. What do you love about fatherhood? The chaos, the learning. Is climate change one of your top priorities? What's your message to girls who want to make a difference in their own communities? Believe in yourself. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. I can smell the chicken. It's almost done. Yeah. We're gonna make a really quick special sauce. You can call it Savannah's special sauce. <laughs> so this is a cup of mayonnaise. Okay. We're gonna add um, a fourth cup of ketchup. Okay. Any old ketchup? Yep. And oh. you can like, you know, taste this if you like less ketchup, if you like more, mm -hmm. if you don't want ketchup. It's just kind of a fun. It's it, it just looks like the sauces you get at like fast food restaurants. Oh, this is uh, a, a tablespoon? tablespoon of mustard. You can use yellow. Dijon. I feel like the Dijon can be kind of spicy for kids, so yeah. I stick with yellow. Kids like sauce. They like to dip. Yes. And just mix Dipping it up. Dipping is key. Yep. With the whisk or this little spatula? You can or? use that. Whatever. Yeah. 
until it kind of gets that like pinky special. Oh my gosh, it is the stuff that's yeah. on your fast uh -huh. food burger. Savannah's um, secret Savannah sauce. Savannah's secret sauce. <laughs> okay. So why don't you spoon that mm -hmm. into, mm -hmm. yep, there you go. Okay. And then, Dad. perfect. All right, now, why don't you go check on the mac and cheese? Okay. Because it's probably done, mm -hmm. but what I like to do sometimes at the very end yeah. is just broil it. It's done. Okay, well, let's, let's, let me see. Let's just broil it for like okay. a couple minutes. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Because it'll just get nice and caramelized on the top. You just have to How make long? sure you watch your broiler because every oven's different. It could be like 30 seconds or it could be two minutes. What am so, I looking for? Just to get that kind of brown caramelization. But okay. while, while, why don't you grab the chicken? Because I think that that's done. Here, okay. Janita. Oh, you got it. When you tell me to watch the oven, I am ready to do it. <laughs> I'm ready to stare Stand obsessively. This there. looks good. Perfect. I can't believe we made this. You made this, Savannah. Correction. It looks yummy. Right, here, put it right oh, here. Okay. And then you can just take the tongs and okay. throw them on there. And then we'll check on our mac and cheese. It should be done. Ooh, nice and crispy. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And they look really good. They actually do. Okay, now we can grab the mac and cheese. Okay. Ooh, yeah. Does okay. it look good? Mm-hmm. Okay. Ooh, it got that little golden top. Perfect. Yeah, just gets it nice and, I love the crusty edges. A little broil. Ooh. Okay. All right, you grab yeah, that. I still haven't learned this technique I will well. grab, that was pretty good. Okay. I'll grab this. And we can eat. Yum. Okay, we Yum. did this. We did it. Let's eat like toddlers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this actually looks very good to me. I'm excited. Okay. So be careful. Can That's I serve, hot. Serve you up some. Yes, please. Look at how oh, you see. It's good. And look at that. It sounds all nice and mm -hmm. crusty. I'm gonna see if I can taste okay. a cauliflower. Yep, that's the real test. Well, the real test will will come. Will come. Let's see. Let's see. I'm just gonna use my hands to take some chicken. Put some mm -hmm. Siri Savannah special sauce. Yep. Now this is all yours now. You get to take credit for that sauce. <laughs> okay. Smells good. Bon appetit. Cheers, bon Cheers. appetit. Cheers, okay. Here's the test. All right. I'm going for the cauliflower. Me too. First. I just wanna it's see. so hot. Hot and delicious. It's really good. It's so good. You can't tell. You cannot tell. Not one bit. Mm -mm. I'm just okay. gonna get into this chicken. Should I dip Even it the way my kids would? No, yeah. Let's go classic. Whatever. You're right. You're right. All right. Mmm. It's good. So good. There is it no right. It tastes good. There's no right and mm. wrong when it comes to kid food. <laughs> you are actually a delicious chef. So thank you for doing this silly kid food with me. But this is what I actually need to know. Mm -hmm. It's not silly. We have. Picky eaters combined. Yes. And so this is what we have to do. I mean, we have to have fun, interesting meals for them. It's good, and now I don't have to feel so guilty. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a triumph. There's only one thing to do now. You know what we have to do. Put it to the test. Put it to the test with the kids. All right. An excuse we'll... to get together. Exactly. <laughs> Let's do Let's it. Let's do it. Good luck. <laughs> to you, too. <laughs>Good Thursday morning. Our top story, a clear message being sent overnight in Uvalde. That's right. It's something that's been months in the making for many families down in Texas. It is August 25th. This is today. Fired. All in favor? Motion passes unanimously. The Uvalde School Board votes to remove its